be safe, put the masks on. Um, just in case you've never done this before, we don't exit at all during the scene. Um, we'll have about 10 minutes after each scene to help set up. Typically actors will help set up so we can get it quickly going as, as soon as possible. We'll have a lunch break at noon. So as long as you um, go and come back, then great. And then we'll start the after scene at one and then class will go until three today. Um, same schedule for Saturday. And just make sure you're not spilling anything all over the place. Make sure you're taking notes. Make sure your phones are off if you can or make sure they're on silent or vibrate. Um, so they don't go off in the middle of a scene. And just be aware that you may be on camera. So don't pick your nose, don't do anything crazy, don't do any cartwheels in the middle of class. If you want to, we can do it outside. Um, and let's just have a great day. So let's give them a big yes. Hi. Uh, <laughs> do you have a question? I actually do have a question. Yes. Um, the calendar had the lunch break at 11. So was that pushed to 12 or is that at 11? <laughs> I believe we have it. Lunch break is at noon. At noon is what I think. Yes. Lunch break is at noon. Okay. I must have pushed it. Okay. So it should be three scenes and then lunch at noon and then two more scenes after that. Okay. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Of course. Andrea. <laughs> We're good? Good. How this is going to work is Matt will announce the scene. Um, we will give a big round of applause then. So that's when we'll save our applause. Obviously when the scene is over. Um, and then at the end of the day, Matt will save a couple minutes to answer any questions that we may have. Um, and then tomorrow is going to be your day where you'll want to get in your extra rehearsal before we perform on Saturday. Thank you, everyone. Woo! Make sure you're yeah. checking this as well. Yeah. So unplug there, plug in here every now and then, you're just to check. Okay, thank you all for being here. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Masterclass. Every Masterclass has its own unique time and moment in space. And here we are in the middle of a global pandemic. And once again, we are finding a way to surge forward. We are finding a way to put up art we are finding a way to better ourselves as human beings and as actors. And that's what, that's what this is all about. I'm going to do my best to ask good questions, to connect, to find out where you are, and to push you. So understand that one of my goals is to push you out of your comfort zone. One of my goals is to push into your fear, and then help you break through it. So it doesn't always feel comfortable in the moment, but we hope that you're able to push through in times and that, and that I'm given the wisdom to know when to push and when not, and that, and that we can make some major breakthroughs with these scenes. So thank you everyone who's tuning in online, welcome. We'll get to further discussion later. Our first scene of the day, we are working on an excerpt from the play Proof. Actors Joey and Andrea will be performing. What? Oh, God. Sorry. Did I wake you? 
What? Were you asleep? You scared me, for Christ's sakes. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I didn't realize it had gotten so late. I'm done for the night. Good. Okay, so, uh, Andrea. <laughs> opening line. You scared me. You weren't scared. Right, yeah. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to work at that. You've got to be scared. So what's going on in your mind moment before? Kind of hallucinate, not even kind of. I hallucinated my dad kind of talking to me because mm -hmm. it was my birthday. Yeah. And he was sitting right there. So in my mind, I'm kind of still in that daydream where I feel like he's sitting next to me. So I'm not really here. Like I'm here, but mentally I'm not here at all. So he kind of snaps me out of right. this dream that I've kind of constructed for myself. So you have to snap. It's got to be a wake up what moment. Right. What? Oh, okay, God. all right, a little bit yeah. better. A little waited bit better that long. time. What's up? I waited too long. What do you mean? Like I didn't check in and then I was like, I got stuck. I felt stuck. Yeah, so, so and you're, um, so here's the problem. You're, you're, both, you're both actors and you know, and right now you know you're acting and you have to, you have to let go of that. So, um, Andrea, there's going to be a better way to help yourself be surprised. Mm -hmm. And it's probably to let yourself get distracted in a way and very, very um, connected to what's going on in your mind. Okay. Okay. And then you hear something and you need to jolt and speak. It's got to be, don't wake up and then say what, like it doesn't make sense. Okay. Okay. Now, you have one objective right now. What is it? Get out. Get out. Get out. So you, you cannot wait for her. Yeah. Okay. You cannot wait. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So okay. just you, you sneak out. You're, you're, trying to, you're trying to steal stuff out of the house. Yeah. And, and Andrea, if I were you, I would adjust my chair and my head so that I'm not looking at where he is. Okay. So you can be surprised, you know? One second, Joey. Anna and Andrea, what, what is happening in her hallucination right now? I just finished talking to my dad, so I feel like he's still sitting there. Right. And, and what's the end of that conversation? We were just talking. He was trying to convince me to go talk to a friend. Uh -huh. And we were talking basically about how lonely I am as a person because I don't have any friends because all I had was him mm -hmm. for years and years and years. So he's the only person that I realistically talked to. Yes, and isn't there a realization right now that you might be crazy and that he doesn't exist? Isn't that a part of that scene? I, think, I thought that happened when I, like, because after the second what, I look back to the chair and I'm like, he's not there. I thought the realization of like, oh, I actually might be crazy happens then. But it I think it's then. happening inside of your hallucination. That I think I'm crazy inside the hallucination? You're, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'd have to go to the lines, but there, it's pretty specific where, where dad says something to you and then you're, you're having this realization. Right, right. He says something like, oh, like, do you think that, like, am I really here or something like that? Yeah, right. yeah, I remember. And, okay. and, you're, and, and then you're thinking to yourself, like, am I crazy? And the two of you have this moment together where you, you're having this realization and then it's back to real life. Right. That's the moment. So go into your hallucination. You can go back into, and, 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 and drunk, by the way, too. Drunk. You ever been drunk? No. 
<laughs> Good. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody drunk? Yes, many times. Okay. How is that? Um, mostly, I've never seen a weepy drunk or like a sad contemplative drunk, and I feel like she's like a sad contemplative drunk. I've seen very happy drunks though. They don't. Have, have you to... seen angry drunks? No. <laughs> have you heard of angry drunks? Yes. Have you seen an angry drunk on TV? Yes. Okay. So, there's a bit of that too, and where does anger come from? I think it comes from like problems with your own self too that you kind of project onto other people. Yeah. So you having personal problems and also this idea of like, I feel like you feeling like you can deal with your own problems and kind of makes anger come into like play, at least for her. Like this idea of like, I want to be left alone. I don't Well, it's a, what it is, it's a cry for help. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a cover up for loneliness. It is a reaction to lack of love. Um, that's usually that's where anger comes from. Right. Ninety nine percent of the time, it's it comes down from I feel like I've been hurt. It comes from the hurt, and so she's hurting, and then this guy comes in her path, and sort of wakes her up out of this stupor, and now she's drunk probably a little angry drunk, probably a little tired drunk, but also angry drunk. She kind of likes him. She sort of, she sort of likes the fact that he's here because maybe it makes her feel safe and, and less alone, but she'd never show him that. And, and she's looking at herself going, so that, she, so that he doesn't call me out on the fact that I've been drinking a bottle, <laughs> why don't I accuse him of what the heck is he doing here? Okay. Siri here. Let me know if I can help. You can't. <laughs> you might. I don't know. <laughs> what? Oh, God. Sorry. Did I wake you? What? Were you asleep? You scared me, for Christ's sakes. Okay, it's better. I don't believe you. Do you believe you? No, I didn't okay. feel like that was authentic at Great. all. <laughs> so, so let's not keep going. Go back, do it again. Here's a quick lesson for everybody. If, if you want to be authentic, surprise the crap out of yourself. If you surprise you, you'll surprise us. So you, when you close your eyes, you can't know how you're going to stand up or not stand up or do or not do or fall out of your chair, whatever. But you need to go decide and then do something. And that is what disturbs the air and, and will put you on some sort of a, a path to being unsure about what comes next. And that's where you want to live as an actor. As soon as it's safe, you got to hate it. Go again. What? So you're late on the what? Right. <laughs> and, and you don't get to know that he's there either. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of, yeah, I, I see that, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's your visual, ready? You're on a plane, and you're, and you're drunk, and you're, and you're <laughs> drooling out the window. And then the, the, you know, the ding goes off, because everybody's off the plane. And like, ding, like, what? <laughs> like, you're, like, you're, like, that's, that's the moment. And then he's like, crap. And then you're, you're still coming too, and you're like, what? Like, the idea is what's going on? What, you know, uh, what the F is happening right now, like a gunshot went off. That's mm -hmm. the idea, okay? Do me a favor, Andrea, stand up. Walk across the room as her. 
okay, you're not drunk. <laughs> Keep walking until I believe you're drunk. Drunk people try not to be drunk. Try not to. Try to grab the bottle like you're not drunk. Try to sit down like you're not drunk, but you're so drunk that it takes a lot of thought. Try so hard to cover it up. Try not to pass out, but you're so tired. Try not to drool, but you just have alcohol dripping out of your pores. Try not to snore, but you're just so tired. You're just so tired. You're so depressed and you're so tired. Let it go. Big breath, give a big sound. Big sound. Big sound. More, big breath. Big sound, big breath, big sound. No, big sound. No, hold it, big sound, big sound. Keep trying not to pass out, but you're so tired. You're so tired, lay down, you're so tired. You're so tired, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, you're so tired. Big breath, big sound. No. <laughs> Just pass out and drool. All right, so you missed it, Andrea. <laughs> I wasn't authentically surprised, so I didn't want to fake it. Okay, so, so then you, you've got it. You have to do a better job with your head game. Okay. Because what has to happen is the first, the first sound you hear, let's go back, go back to pass out. Pass out. <laughs> yep, snore, snore, snore. Be out. <laughs> and you should have said what? Okay. <laughs> so I helped you earn that moment, but then you weren't on the line. Like that's gotta be like, and whatever the noise is for you, that's this, this jolt. No, I didn't fall down. I'm okay. Siri can help. Okay? Yeah. So, so let yourself get to this place where you're not thinking about the line or the class or the cameras or whatever, and you're just, just oh. And then when you hear something, it's just <laughs> All right? Joey! Yeah! Disturb the air, bro. Okay. <laughs> What? Oh, God. You looked right at him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, you tried to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. You laid on your line. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I wake you? What? Were you asleep? You scared me for Christ's sakes. You be angry, drunk. Say what it again. What are you doing? No, say you scared me. You scared me for Christ's sakes. No, be angry, drunk. You scared me for Christ's sakes. Okay, good. They're two different lines. Say it again. Split them up. You scared me. For Christ's sakes. For Christ's sakes! Yeah, it's, it's two different lines. You scared me, for Christ's sakes! I'm sorry. I... Good, now be drunk, be drunk, be drunk, and mad, mad, so mad, so mad. What are I'm, you doing? I didn't realize it had gotten so late. <laughs> I'm done for the night. 
Good. <laughs> Drinking alone? <laughs> yes. Champagne, huh? Yes. Celebrating? No, I just like champagne. It's festive. Okay, what? good, 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 good. So how's the beginning feel now? A lot better. Awesome. Now, why did it feel so much better? It felt more in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I kind of felt, I feel like I was trying so hard for her to be like lethargic and like, kind of like, not really lazy, but very much like in her own headspace that I kind of completely abandoned this idea that she was like very pissed off at him consistently through the entire scene. Yeah, well, no, here's the deal. It, it, you're, you're taking this one thing and thinking that that's the answer. It's actually not. Mm -hmm. What we did was I took you out of trying to do something and just put you in the scene. So the, the idea here is she is those things, but people who are those things don't try to act that way. And you were trying to act that way. So she's lethargic, she's gonna wake up and try not to be. Okay. Right. The reason I stopped the scene is we got comfortable. Comfortable is boring. So you put your stuff down, I think that was a mistake. You okay. let him put his stuff down, I think that's a mistake. So you got moving, you got doing something new, you, got, you, you let yourself be surprised, therefore it felt great. Did you notice he put his stuff down? No. Ah, see? So that means you're not listening because here's, here's what I do. If I'm, if I'm walking, I, I be, I'm so into him just as an actor listening that put your stuff down. Okay. <laughs> well, I better go. <laughs> Yeah, what's in your bag? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Show me. What? <laughs> Show me what's in your bag. Why? Show me what's in your bag right now. You're kidding. Okay, you're not kidding. Right. <clears throat> Why are you here so late? I was working on your dad's papers. I got some gym clothes, some buy spray, <laughs> two oranges. Whatever, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yes. so, so the, I <laughs> the idea is because I'm, so, I'm paying so much attention that when I hear it, it's like, what? What? And now I'm just curious. I don't have to speak. I have to listen and be curious. Then I have to be ready to react. No matter what's coming, I have to be ready from my point of view, which right now is drunk and angry, and also I don't want him to leave. These are the conflicting things. And I'm crazy. And he's like, she bad crazy, man. So bad crazy, but why am I so attracted to her? But she's <laughs> so, that's going on in his mind, right? And she's like, put your stuff out. And he's like, I don't want to, but I do. <laughs> and, and that's happening, okay? So, so if you feel safe, then it's not good. I, and, and the reason I, I demonstrated here is because what I'm not going to do as her is I'm not going to let him off the hook. Because this is my house. That's my dad's stuff. My dad died. Why are you here? I want to publish his stuff. Yeah, for yourself, you selfish piece of crap. No, I loved your dad. He's sure. my mentor. Okay. Yeah. So should I come back tomorrow or? <laughs> That's great. You just need to have a voice, Joey. <laughs> All right, you get it? You're Here right. we go. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. Should have spoken. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and why am I saying that? Because it's like a what the like first what I feel like is like a momentary reaction. Uh, totally. And I I hate myself as an actor if I wake up and then I have to say what afterward. Because mm -hmm. that's really hard. <laughs> <gasps> what? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you just made your job so much more difficult. What's your why? I forgot something upstairs. Okay, let's let. Let's hear some snoring. What? Oh, God. Sorry, did I wake you? Yeah, good. What? Yeah, and now you're like totally alert. Weird. <sighs> Were you asleep? You scared me, for Christ's sakes. What are you doing? I'm sorry, I didn't realize it had gotten so late. I'm done for the night. Good. You're letting him off the hook. Drinking alone? So, so do, you, do you understand that? Right, yeah. So don't walk away, basically. But, but why? It's all about the why. I can walk if, I, if, I, if it's right. Mm -hmm. So it's not about walking, not walking. It's about why is it wrong in this moment? Because I'm still, I'm still very tense, and I want to make sure that he gets out the door. Yes. Okay. As soon as you walk away, that's it. That is a sign of comfortability. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of, of whatever. And and maybe you could walk if he were back there, and you were walking over here to be more aggressive or something, mm -hmm. right? But when you turn your back to him, there's something interesting that happens there. Okay. Um, I want to give you one other gift here. I think you ought to. Take another big swig in a second and let some drool out. Okay. Okay. Make yourself feel sloppy and not put together. You don't have to rush into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because then you have the obstacle of overcoming that thing. Because then you're going to want to, like, like we do when we wake up and from a, a complete pass out, you're, you're, you're disoriented. And you woke up and you were like, <laughs> Mary Poppins. <laughs> Okay? Okay. All right. And then Joey, as a, 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 on your end, I'm glad you didn't make a rando sound once you made it through. I thought about it, and then I was like, no, that's a really I bad idea. I would have, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't. So then creatively, you go, okay, well, the scene has to happen. Yeah. So then, so then what do I do? Mm -hmm. You know, and then, so that wasn't, I mean, that's not written in. If they wanted that, they would have put it in, right? Yeah. So it's not there. But, but now, now it's creative. Now it's like this is the one time that happens. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out how each time you can find a way to Be surprise different. her. Okay. To, 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 to help her come out in a stumper. And, and I would not look his direction. Okay. I would find your way there. Mm -hmm. um, does it say anything specific in the stage direction about what, like, exactly the way you are, are walking out? No, I don't think so. I don't think so, but uh, we could take a look if you want. The play's right there. Okay. I, uh, yeah, well, let's grab it real okay. quick because I, I just want to make sure we're not going to undo something and, and that we have full creative reign here.
says he lets the door go bangs shut. Hello, there you go. Yeah. That's your answer. Okay. So, so he doesn't know she's out there, or he does, and he and and then he lets the door go, and then it smacks like whatever, like however you want to interpret that. And maybe for every theater and every stage, there's going to be something different. But if you don't know she's there, and, and you've probably dealt with one of those doors before that surprises you. Oh yeah. You know, and you, and and um, you think it's going to be a soft close, and then it's like a. You know, that's what happens. Gotcha. And he's, he's being so cautious and everything, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Okay? Cool. Andrea, your goal is to feel sloppy and ugly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even like, maybe, maybe like, without taking anything out, just mess up your hair a little bit too. Just scratch at it, just, just be aggressive, like, ugh. Be aggressive? <laughs> yeah, oof. Okay, good, and you just, you just don't feel right. It's fine, yeah. It's not perfect. Maybe one sleeve up, a little rando. What? Oh God, sorry, did I wake you? What? Were you asleep? You scared me, for Christ's sakes. Good, now sit down, Andrea, and just connect. What are you doing? No. I'm... What are you doing? That's right, correct. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it had gotten so late. I'm done for the night. Good. <laughs> Drinking alone? Yes. Good, and grab it. Like it's, like it's any of your business. Champagne, huh? Yes. Drink again. Like it's any of your business and get drunker and madder. Celebrating? No, I just like champagne. It's festive. What? Don't stop being drunk. Your, your leg cross was not drunk. What? It's festive. Do you want some? <laughs> sure. I'm done. You can take the rest with you. Oh. No thanks, I shouldn't. Don't Take it. Don't lose your drunk. I'm done. I shouldn't, I'm driving. <laughs> Don't lose your drunk. Well, I can let myself out. Good. <laughs> when should I come back? Come back? Yeah, I'm nowhere near finished. Maybe tomorrow? We have a funeral tomorrow. God, you're right. Try the funeral line again. We have a funeral tomorrow. Let, let's, let's take our time and find it. Go back, Joey, to where you were. And just stay there on the uh, when should I come back and just stay. Kay. Take a breath. When should I come back? Come back? Yeah. I'm nowhere near finished. Maybe tomorrow? Wait. And now make him feel like absolute junk. We have a funeral tomorrow. God. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I was gonna attend if that's all right. Yes. What about Sunday? Will you be around? You've had three days. I'd love to get in F some Find more. your way to Sunday, Joey. You didn't find yeah. your way there. Yeah, you're right. Take a breath. 
Okay, so she just said you can go to the funeral. Cool. Now, now remember, you have, you have conf conflicting objectives in your brain. Just take your time. And Andrea, how's he coming across to you now? Scared. How do you feel about that? Powerful. Great. So, <laughs> so lean back and take a drink. And be drunk. <laughs> what about Sunday? Will you be around? You've had three days. I'd love to get in some more time up there. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer do you need? Let her drink. She's speaking to you right now. Watch her swallow. She's speaking to you. Take another drink, Andrea. Swish it around a little bit and be drunker. Let him see you swish it. See the bottle, Joey. See the bottle. Another week? Are you joking? <laughs> no. Do you know how much stuff there is? A week? I know you don't need anybody in your hair right now. Look. Spent the last couple of days getting everything sorted out. It's mostly notebooks. He dated them all. Now that I've got them in order, I don't have to work here. Okay, so I, so I, so I, don't, I don't believe you right now. So take a breath, Joey, relax. Relax your face, relax your forehead. Find your way into the scene and find your way toward this line. Ground yourself. What does your instinct tell you? What do you want to do or how do you want to speak? I know you don't need anyone in your hair right now. Look. Keep listening. No, so, so you stopped listening. So that was, that, I think that was right. I think you listened to instinct and then, you, and then you're like, I've made my choice, now I'm gonna do this thing. Uh-huh. Keep listening. Okay. Because things can change. Okay. Take another breath. It's gonna be different. Let it be different every time. And it's different because she, 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 like she, she's moving her foot right now. That matters to me. It should matter to you. Mm-hmm. I know you don't need anyone in your hair right now. <laughs> Look, I spent the last couple of days getting everything sorted out. It's mostly notebooks. He dated them all. Now that I've got them in order, I don't have to work here. I could take some stuff home, read it, bring it back. No. I'll be careful. My father wouldn't want anything moved, and I don't want anything to leave this house. All right, good. We're going to stop here. How are we doing? That felt really good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the experience for you. Do you want to go, Joey? You go, you take it. <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> um, I feel like I was fighting so hard to play one version of it that I never even like thought to think of this very similar yet very different version. So I was going for like that, I'm depressed, I'm sad. My dad just died, his funeral's tomorrow. So I felt like I needed to play into this whole like, I'm depressed, sad, don't really care, but I really just want you to leave. But. I kind of never really considered this like, she's very angry all the time. She's angry about the situation she's in. So she would be fighting a lot harder to get him out of the house and she would care a lot more about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm glad you saw another side. I also just want you to understand too that um, being sad and depressed doesn't mean I play sad and depressed. I know that um, most people, when they get sad and depressed, are more likely to take their emotions out on the people they love. And then they say sorry afterward. Hopefully. <laughs> so 
um, I, I, as you grow as an actress and as you understand what's happening here, what I, what I want you to really get is that this is probably different acting than you've ever done in your life. And it's not about the fact that you figured out she's angry. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that you became truthful. And you were authentic, probably for the first time in your life, on stage or in front of a camera. And it feels really good. And it feels right. And it's emotional. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Tell me about that. Because I want to know that. I don't want to hear the intellectual side of this thing. I want to hear from your heart. I felt like I was trying to push emotions a lot more before. Like I was forcing myself to just feel things and trying to get myself into a place where I could feel this one specific emotion that I had kind of assigned to a certain section, which I've noticed I've had a problem with for a really long time. But I never really considered like, okay, well, I need to kind of, it's very in the moment. Like I always pre-planned emotions intellectually, which is not a good idea because they do come from the heart. So I felt like, this time I learned that I shouldn't really think of it from an intellectual standpoint. It should be a lot more from like a feeling rather than just a thought, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and feelings come from thoughts too. So it also depends on what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Because if she's thinking, you'll find your way to the good emotion. If you're thinking, you won't. You'll think about what trying to be right or trying to, trying to not be wrong, essentially. Um, you see now you feel like more your authentic self answering the questions too. <laughs> yeah. And doesn't that feel good? Yes. It's like we're taking a mask off and going, you know what? I'm okay being me. Why'd you why'd you decide to take the class? I wanted to grow as an actor. I felt like I went I got to a point where I was kind of like at a wall almost. Like I didn't feel like I was growing a lot and I talked about this with you before how I kind of started dropping things and then started really focusing on acting so I felt like this was like the next step and I wanted to be pushed and critiqued like harshly because I knew that's what I needed even if it made me feel really uncomfortable and I'm not good with like very harsh critiques but I needed to put myself in that situation so okay and and how how were you with today's critiques actually really good <laughs> they were really fun like less harsh more okay, like that's like a perspective that I've never seen before, but I really want to try it. So I was more excited about them Good. than scared of them. Good, and that's a perspective. That's a choice. And because you made that choice, we got someplace. But you understand, if I'm watching a scene, you don't want me to let you keep going if it's a bunch of bull crap. And, and that's why I like to ask, did you, did you believe it? Did the you like time? it? first time? No. You know, and I love when you responded, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's great because then, then at least you're, you're acknowledging that. The harder place for me to coach from is for me to say, did you believe that? And you go, I think I did or, you know, and, and, but you know the truth and now we got to fight for the truth first before we can get to someplace real. Next question, do you deal, do you deal with any of this trying to pre-plan your emotions and, and, and things in your life? Kind of, a little bit. <laughs> Tell me about that. It's like, I don't know, it's like that thing where you're like planning a conversation with someone that you know is a really hard conversation and you're like, I'm going to have complete control over my emotions. This is how this conversation is going to go. Like, <laughs> I know I'm going to react. I'm going to like think about every possible way that this could go wrong or go well. And then I'm just going to like prepare myself to like react accordingly almost. Mm -hmm. I guess I use it like more positively than negatively. Like I'm going to keep like a stoic exterior <laughs> no matter how this goes but yeah I think I do pre-plan a little bit now, now do you think that's a good thing not always kind of depends on the situation yeah. if it is like a professional conversation that I feel like could go south really quickly I think right. that it's good to be a little bit stoic on the outside yeah but like if it's something that's purely emotional I do have a tendency to like be really professional about it. I don't think that's good. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's one of those deals where you're right. Like, there's, there's a time and a place. But in the end, I think, I think it, it's, a, it's a good thing to be known as somebody who's authentic. So there's one thing, was one thing to say, I'm just not going to say anything. 
or you just don't. And it's another thing to like, cover up and almost like, you know, put a Band-Aid on something that doesn't really need a Band-Aid, it needs surgery. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, and if you're not careful, your closest relationships won't happen because you won't let people in because you're afraid to get hurt. Yeah. Sound familiar? Yes. <laughs> okay. So breathe. How's that make you feel? Calm, peaceful. Why? Because I'm not really thinking about anything except just breathing. Okay. Breathe again. How does it make you feel that those emotions are familiar to you? It depends on the context. Because I don't think that it's healthy to like, hide your emotions in like, everyday life. But from an actor's standpoint, I guess it kind of opens up me understanding certain characters better. What does? Not struggling with like, hiding emotions, I guess, in a way. Right. Yeah, so, so and, I, and I think that this is going to open you up as a person. That's my hope. My hope is that, that this class opens everybody up as a person and you become a better actor in the, in the process. So if you can breathe into that and you can get to some truth, you can get to some real authentic grind inside here, and, and we may not be there yet, but we'll get there. As we do, it opens up a whole other world for you in the scene, actually. But right now you're still you've still got a lid on it. It's like a it's like a pot right now and it's simmering and we can hear the sound, but you're not ready to take the lid off, and that's okay. That's where we are. Today was a big win for you and a big win for Joey as well. I'm looking forward to talking to him. Welcome to Masterclass. Thank you. <laughs> Joseph H. Uh, I man. Thanks. It's it's interesting. It's really good to be back on stage. <laughs> That's, uh, but I found it really interesting. Uh, I I took a lot out of our last masterclass online. Um, I learned a lot. It was super different. So there's there's a feeling of like really good being back on stage. But uh, I learned so much virtually actually. And one of the things I really took that was hard specifically for this script. And it's funny because you say the scene chooses the person, right? Mm -hmm. um, was I, because I am a quick study, I'm, I'm pretty good at memorization, I would paraphrase almost every script. And I would say every masterclass up until the last one on the last day, I did that with all my scripts. You know, I'd sub in words subconsciously because it was so quick that I would just like add in whatever. So this time around, um, we had the month and I took it chunk by chunk. And I just like was really, really hard on myself about that. And, um, and it made, made a world's difference. And, and I noticed some of the things you point out and like coach on. I'm like, I probably lost so much in the past because like if I say a word and then she repeats it, but I paraphrase, then she doesn't get to repeat it and the scene doesn't flow like it could have, you know. And subconsciously, you know you are lying. Mm. Yeah. Subconsciously, you know it's not the exact thing and you're trying to find what to say. And yeah. probably you're right. Probably half of the time, that I stopped you and was calling you on being weird or something or being out of the scene, it's because of that. There was something else going on. Yeah. And I was trying to find ways for you to just be. And you couldn't because you were, you were sifting through these like little mini, I, I, I'll call them a lie, like little yeah. mini trying to figure out what I'm saying but not being completely accurate with it. Totally. See, this is a big, a big deal, big lesson for you because, uh, like for instance, this morning, JR. Cardenas was on the show mm -hmm. and he spoke about success and he's a very successful man and and I loved what he said he said something about um, and I'll paraphrase him because I don't have it memorized but but the essence of what he said was if you think you're confident then then he worries for you yeah you know if you if you think you've got it that's when you know you don't and, and you've heard me say that before too, is like the 100%. idea of like someone's gonna know, like I'll know they're ready when they don't think they're ready. Yeah. But when you're, when you're overconfident, 
I get a little worried about you. Mm -hmm. So you saying things like, well, I'm a good memorizer, and I have a blah. Some of that's good, but truthfully, you want to go, okay, let me be honest about the fact that I missed a word. Yeah. Well, I can't say I'm a great memorizer and that it's perfect, because it's not. 100%. And once you come to terms with that, now all of a sudden you've got a new freedom that you haven't been able to have before, because that little thing is not holding you back. Yeah, and I felt it too. I wasn't, I was scared today, but it was good. Like it, you know, it, it's just what you just described. Like I was legitimately like fearful and I wanted to do right to the play. Because I've to done- To the play, to I've the play. Yeah. Good, good. If you are scared that you're not gonna bring truth if you're scared that like, ah, I just want to make sure I do the playwright justice. I just want to make sure that I, that I handle mental health appropriately right now in this time because I'm an actor and that's my responsibility. If that's why you're scared, hallelujah, you're going to crush. But if you're scared because you didn't do the work, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. There's two different fears. There's good fear and there's bad fear. And the bad fear we can overcome, we do have a choice. We can do the work and we can do more work and we can be honest with ourselves and we can be hard on ourselves in a positive way. Mm -hmm. I love fear. Fear's great. Fear's what keeps me from doing crack. <laughs> fear, is, fear is what keeps me from going back and drinking alcohol again. I'm done drinking alcohol because I'm afraid to go back to the guy that was there. I'm afraid not to wake up at four in the morning. I'm terrified of it. I love fear. Fear's amazing. Other fears, I just make the choice. I don't want to be afraid of that. Well, how do I overcome that? I do it. I fail at it. I scrape my face against the ground. I do it again. It doesn't hurt as bad the second time. I do it again. That's it. You want to really become not fearful, take a punch in the face. And, I, and, and I'm not kidding. Yeah. Oh, I know. You take a punch in the face. And I'm going to tell you something. As soon as you take a shot in the face, you realize it doesn't hurt as bad as you thought. Yeah. It's not that bad. And you're like, okay, I don't need to be afraid of the guy on the subway. I don't need to be, I don't need to be afraid. Now, I'm not going to pick a fight, but I don't have to be afraid. So there's certain fears that are good, certain fears that are not good. And this is what happens to the world. You know, you take enough shots in the face, you take enough shots over and over again, culturally, you know, whatever. Eventually you go, I'm not scared of taking that shot anymore. I'm going to rise up. And that's what happens. And that's a good thing. This is great. This is a good scene. Thank you both. Thank you. All right, let's set up for our next scene, please. Thank you. You got it. Um, Ryan, if you could run and get the girls for me um, and have the girls come in here, I will mic the girls. I'm going to take a quick picture of them. And then your guys' job, if I could ask you, once they come in, we'll just ask them what they need from us. And we will help them set up the scene, OK? I will be taking the next one off. Andrea, give me one second. I just would like to pose you for a second.
There you go. Hello, my, Monica. Uh, keep, keep going. Hello, hello, Monica. Test one, two, Monica, three. Tell me about the best date you've ever been on. Best date? Yeah. I don't think I've ever been on a date. Okay. Well, actually, no, I have, actually. How about best, uh, best anywhere date? you want to go on vacation? Uh, Barcelona, Spain. Ooh, why? Because lots of history and a little bit of my Senior background. Loudest line? Yeah. Okay. I can't believe you called me a whore. Olivia, we run with this first. Well, how are you doing the scene, though? Oh, um. Test, so okay. I can't believe you called me a whore. Good. <laughs> Again or good? No, that's good. Cool. Uh, Olivia, you're not on yet. Matt, Checking sound for Joey. Sound check. Sound check. Sound check. It's the sound check. Okay. Okay, go ahead and put the blazer on. All right, Olivia, sound check. Sound check, sound check. Ooh. Too loud? No, you're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, go. Is this going to... Okay. Sound check, sound check. Is it totally covered by the blazer? I think it might be covered by the blazer. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I wouldn't recommend covering it. Okay. It's a little rough. She doesn't. No, because it's outdoors. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, good plan. Duh, hello. There we go. And it blends in with the blazer. Yeah. You're a whore. Is it really going to be that quiet? I remember that one. You're a whore. I love that one. I did. I did the scene. One more time. I love it. You're a whore. You did this scene, um, Shay? Who are you, Natalie or Celeste? I did. Oh, we're, we're on this scene now. Okay. Yeah. Monica, go ahead. One more time. Loud or just talking? No, you're good. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Let me throw this away. Who are you again? Sorry. I was Celeste. Oh, nice. I did not talk about You want to try and switch that now? Oh, my muffin. So, oh, your muffin? No. We'll with, we'll uh, yeah. Bring your muffin. At lunch. Okay. Yeah. So, if we make it to the end, we'll cut it after you say, I know what to do. Okay. Yeah. I think we're okay. good. We're not going to include the Tommy part. Sweet. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. I put it lower because she's loud, but um, just watch the levels turn up and down. Do you have any here? Is this like in your space? No, I mean... I'm going to be on Monica. You're on Monica. Oh. So either you or Dakota's on Monica. Are we good to you? Okay. So do you want to do live or do you want me to do live? Uh, I'll, I'll do live. So here. Monica. Yeah. So I'll come in from here. Okay. Joey, if when I enter the scene, can I come in from this way and it still catches me? Or? Yeah. Okay. She always listens. Yeah, she does. A really, really good listener. Not imaginary Shay, you know. Regular Shays. Yeah, that's who we're talking about. <gasps> no, we're talking about imaginary Shay. Oh, I wasn't. Jeez, oh. you better fix that before you see it, buddy. <laughs> Are we back in on the live? <laughs> we are back on the live? She's going to enter from there. I'll yeah. get her with the mom box. Buzz. Who what? Olivia's going to enter from there, and I'll get her with the mom box. Great. Just let me know. Good to go? Yep. OK. G to G. G to G. Um, hello, everybody. Everybody who's watching online, we are so happy to have you here. Up next, we have a scene with Monica and Olivia, who are Do not exit or enter the theater.
theater at any time during the scene. Um, after this, we'll have one more scene and then we'll be having a lunch break. So we're excited, take some notes, have some questions ready at the end of the day for Matt. Um, you two going into master class for the first time. My advice to you is to be open, to have fun, listen, and remember that you're here for a reason. We're excited to have you guys, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have actors Olivia and Monica working on an excerpt from the play, Where's My Money? Wait, she tied knots in his tie, she shoved the tie up his tushy, and then at the key moment she ripped the tie out like she was stalling a lawnmower. ba 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 boink The last knot was huge. But here's the twist. All that. right, so we'll go back here. Okay. <laughs> How you feeling? Um, a little nervous. Okay. Yes. Why are you here? I'm here to grow and learn. Okay. What do you want to get from the class? Um, to trust myself. Okay. What else? And to, to work with a scene partner. And so do you not trust yourself now? I thought I did. Because I asked you what you wanted to get from the class, and you said you wanted to get that from the class. Yes. So that would lead me to believe you don't feel like you already have that. Yes. And you'd like to gain that. Is that true or not true? Um, I think I have moments that I do trust myself and moments I don't. Okay. What does that mean, to trust yourself? Um, to be confident. You know, or to trust myself. To be confident, okay. Yeah. So, so, in in what ways? Where does confidence come from? Um, within me. Um, from being in the moment, not thinking about other people or judging me. That's a big part of it, right there. Not judging yourself. Not thinking about what other people think. Mm -hmm. And confidence comes from the work. Mm -hmm. Confidence is earned. Yes. Okay. So, this is your first master class. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna dig in because that's why you're here. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and and our our goal is for you to leave having grown as a human being, and by doing so, you'll become a better actress, guaranteed. All right? You were too casual when you walked in the room. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. I noticed it. Didn't know how it was going to pan out. Mm -hmm. It panned out the way I thought it would. Yes. That casualness, all it is is a mask that you put on to cover up the fact that you're nervous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So if I'm nervous, I you should be should. very, very, very serious about this scene. This is a hard scene. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult play. It's an important message. It's, it's, it's tough. You're about to talk about things that are hard to talk about, mm -hmm. and you're going to curse, and you're going to be doing all these things. And if you do that casually, mm -hmm. then, then it's, it, you will not be using this play for good. You'll be throwing it away. So when okay. you came in, you were kind of the star because it was your turn to go. That's what I mean. Okay. And when we clapped, you acknowledged us. And before you started, whether you realize it or not, you looked right at me and we made eye contact. You don't want that. You want to be in the scene. You want to be believing what's happening. You want to be so serious as an actress mm -hmm. because you take your craft so seriously that nobody would dare talk to you. Where is this girl coming from? Did you read the whole play? Yeah. Okay, where's she coming from? She's coming from a um, bad relationship. She's romantic. Can you have a voice? Sorry. She's coming back. She's coming from a bad relationship. She's unhappy and is having an affair with a married man, but she's ashamed of the dirtiness of what she expects, expects in a sexual relationship. 
so she feels ashamed, but wants to talk to someone about it. Okay. Where is she in this exact moment, mentally? She's talking to the man that she's having an affair with. Mm -hmm. And? And they're having some phone sex. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And so she is covering up all those harsh feelings that she feels with being outrageous. So you're going to be big, you're going to be bold, you're going to be fearless looking mm -hmm. because of how scared you are underneath. And you're trying to impress this guy. Yeah. And, and what's happened is you've got yourself into a relationship where you feel like you have to keep pushing the boundary to the next thing. So you're talking, I think, about a movie. Yeah. And then you're giving details of this movie. Why? To try to, to, try to get this guy all fired up and, and get him to ask you over. What do you, what do you really want at the end of the day? What are you, what's your hope? To be loved. To be loved, yeah. You want him to leave his wife. You mm -hmm. want him to say, you're the one, he loves you, and you want him to, to, to treat you right. And, you're, and you're, so you're, you're desperate for that. Yeah. So all that is piled into this monologue. And it's, and it's not to be taken casually. So you understand what I meant by that when you're walking in the room? Yes. Okay. So from now on, I want you to understand you have a responsibility as an actress. Mm -hmm. Any role you take on, to take so seriously when it's time, when it's go time, okay. you don't get to be nice, Monica. Okay. You consider yourself a nice person, right? Yes. Great. I would consider you a nice person, too. There are times when nice doesn't suit you. Do you agree? Nice is, nice is not always. Mm -hmm. nice, is, nice can be overrated. Kind is different than nice. Sometimes nice can be like, I'm just, I, I, I get walked all over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So take a breath, get in the scene right now. Okay. And be bold. What are you feeling? Um... If you did know. Um, I guess just not confident. Okay. Why? Um, I guess I didn't expect to be stopped so soon. And how does that make you feel? Um, fine. Fine? Sorry. Why am I crying? <laughs> Sorry. Why are you crying? Where is it coming from? Um. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess just um, lack of confidence, not thinking I'm deserving to be here. If you feel that way, you deserve to be here. Okay. As soon as you start thinking the other way, mm -hmm. we're probably going to part ways. You're a wonderful actress. You're a beautiful young woman, and I want to help you find your power. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good. This is very foreign for me. I guess that's why I'm, I'm reacting this way, because I and haven't. That, and that's OK. Yes, yeah. right. That's right. So, so what is the thing that's foreign to you? I guess telling me like, how it really is. Yeah. It actually benefited me, wanting to help me grow. You feel that? Mm -hmm. You feel the love coming? Yeah. Okay, good. Because cause it's, it's dangerous if you don't feel the love because it, it, it's there. It's all over. And I would cry with you. I can. But, I, but my, job is, my job right now is to keep making sure that you know that I want you to cry. It's okay to cry. And when you cry, you're beautiful and strong. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yes, it is.
Yes, it is. Yes. And so, so understand that we're through working together and through you evolving as a strong, capable woman, you'll start to assign different metrics to what constitutes success or not. Mm -hmm. And you don't know. You don't get to know. <laughs> you're, you're second seen in. You don't know what happened right before you. You just feel the vibe. You feel the energy. You're like, crap, something amazing happened in here right before I walked in, right? Did you feel it? Mm -hmm. Okay. What if I told you we stopped the scene on the first line about 35 times? And then we had a major breakthrough. Yeah. And it was great. Mm -hmm. So you want to you get that out of your mind and go, it has nothing to do with that thing that you accidentally said about getting stopped. It's not about that. And she's OK. Your partner's great. She's she, she going to get some action here in a second. Okay, But you need to know that from now on, when because this is not about my class. This is not about respect of me. This is about you respecting craft and respecting yourself. So you can be nice, you can be polite when it's appropriate, and you can be just a badass dominating the room actress when it's time to go to work. And everyone will know, every man in the room will know, I better get the hell out of her way because she's going to do some work right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want that, right? Mm -hmm. You have that. I see it right in your eyes right now. You just, you just went, yeah, <laughs> you're a lioness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Good. Now take a breath. Be a lioness. Take your time with this monologue. It's hard. Is it, these are hard. They're harsh words. They're, they're, they're dirty words. Yeah. They're, they're, they're Shanley. Sh Shanley is, he is a poet. He says things like, anus or something that's like a, a bad dirty word and he turns it into poetry because what he's doing and we have to understand this as artists and as audience members because people get so hung up on the words they get so hung up on the thing and they're like I can't I can't do that and, and, and it's fine for some people the, the word is so important that they can't say it okay but Shanley is writing for a, a, a class of people that exist and he's giving them a voice. He's shining light on them and saying they're important too and you have to listen to them speak in their language on the street where they live. And he's writing the words that they speak and he's saying, you all got to hear it, sorry. Yes. And they curse. So open your ears and listen and understand that the curse word you think is a curse word isn't a curse word. And understand that you've been cursing your whole life by saying I love you. But you say it in such a way that's nasty. So wake up. That's why it's important that we put this stuff up. Because people need to hear this message. They have to hear it. Yeah. They have to understand. They go, I got to open my eyes. I got to, there, there's more to this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So that's your responsibility is you're playing this, this woman who, who she doesn't, have, she, she doesn't have the cards stacked in her deck, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Did you work on the limp? No, I didn't. Yeah. You know, it's so important. It's so important. Mm -hmm. What do you got with you? You got anything with you? My limp? No, like your bag. What, what's in your bag? Oh, um, my beret that we do in the scene. Mm -hmm. What else? And then bag of chips. Okay, what else? And then like a little bag in here. What's in the bag? Sunglasses. Anything else? Anything small? Um, gum. That's it. The gum will work. Okay. Which leg, which leg do you have a limp on? Um, a, okay, so now. Just in between my left and right hip. What's that? Left and right hip. Where, where does she have a limp? Um, I don't think, do they specify? They don't specify. Yeah, they don't they, specify. She says it's a slight disproportion between, between, between my left and right hip. hip. So okay. Okay. one leg is probably a little shorter than the other. Yes, so I 100%. Guess it's, so it's yeah. just, a, it's just I guess but it's, a But it's, it's a lot shorter. Yeah. 
because it's noticeable. It's, it's the only thing she knows about you. When she says, oh, what's your character's name? Celeste. When she says, when someone says, hey, do you, you, you know Celeste? You know the girl with the limp? Mm -hmm. That's how you're described. Yeah. And you understand you haven't done work on the limp. Mm -hmm. It's a big part of what makes her feel self-conscious. Okay. And she's going to feel beautiful for a second. And then this girl's going to come in and make her feel about this big. Okay. Okay. And this is the work that you're, you're gonna learn to do in this class. And it's okay if you got this whole scene wrong, I forgive you. It's your first master class. Yeah. I forgive you completely. What I want you to do is get excited about it though. Mm -hmm. And I want you to go, oh, there's a whole world here that I've never touched as an actor before. Mm -hmm. And I get the opportunity now to start over after today and start focusing on the right things. Mm -hmm. Not how do I look, but what made her her to play this person at this point in time, there's a story there and I better know the story. Confidence comes from that. That's where confidence comes from, is the work. Yes. So when I say, which leg is your limp? You go left. Why do you limp? Because I have a displacement between my right and my left. Why are you asking, fucker? Because that's what she would say. Yes. And I go, and that's what I want you to say as the teacher, because I'm going, great, she knows who she is. Okay. Confident. That's confident. Walking in here like you own the place when it's not really, you know, or just like playing casual mm -hmm. because you're nervous, that's not confident. That's you pretending to be confident. And that's the thing that I wanted to help you move from, from one thing to the other. Okay. This all makes sense to you? Yes. All right. Put your gum in your shoe. The whole pack. Okay. <clears throat> no, no, it, put it in your sandal. Yes. Yeah. Put this in here. And, and, and bend it in such a way that it hurts. So you can't walk normal. It's impossible for you to walk normal and have that there. Actually, Can you bend the pack? Can you bend the, uh, the cardboard? Just Should like, I take just, the gum out? Just, just, no, just squeeze it. Just bend it. Okay. Ruin the gum. I'll buy you another pack. Oh, it's all good. It's not even mine. <laughs> <laughs> now stuff it in there underneath where it hurts. Now try to walk and look cool. Try to be sexy. <laughs> try your best. Really, don't don't try to act, look, walk weird. Try to try to be normal. Good. Now have a seat. That's who she is. She's very self-conscious about that. She's trying to be an actress. She's trying to be on TV. She's trying to be famous. She's trying to be seen. She got a limp. Hurts when she walks. If she could walk normal, she would. She can't. She's not capable, but she'll try her best to walk normal. Yes. Okay. She got a man on the phone. She's trying to cover up all these insecurities by telling him the details of this movie. Now you have to do her justice, the play justice, Shanley justice, the poetry justice by going nice and slow and forcing our audience to listen to these dirty words that we're all gonna go like this when we hear them. You don't get to rush. Okay. And then, and then hopefully we get to a point where we're gonna get to the other side of this thing and we get to go, yes, there's a reason that's there. Mm -hmm. Online audience, if you are one of those people who have a hard time with language, I suggest you look away. Lioness, shoulders back. You dominate this man. Big voice. Wait, she shoved. That's it, good. You caught yourself being weak, that's amazing. The weight was excellent. Keep him, keep him tied to that phone. 
with every consonant. Wait. She tied knots in his tie. She shoved the tie up his tushy. And then, at the key moment, she ripped the tie out like she was drawing a lawnmower. Ba -ba 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 boink Okay, good, good, good. More. Okay. Bigger, louder, slower, more consonants. Take your time. Breathe. Breathe in between the lines. Make, make, us, make us squirm. Big voice. There's somebody who walked in the room, they're super conservative, and make that person hear every single word. Wait, she tied knots in the she, tie. She, she tied, tied. slow. She tied. Okay. Make us visualize what she did. Wait, she tied knots in his tie. She shoved the tie up his tushy, and then at the key moment, she ripped the tie out like she was drawing a lawnmower. Like what? A lawn mower. Like what? Like a lawn mower. Like she was? Like she was starting a lawn mower. Yes. <laughs> Keep going. Ba -ba 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 boink The last knot was huge. <laughs> but here's the twisted part. The next day he goes to the office, he's wearing the tie. <laughs> Other than that, it wasn't a very good movie. <laughs> what? What's that? I can't. I can't. I'm in a public place. Turquoise? You are? Right now? You mean for real? I'd like to see that. Natalie! Can you hold a sec? Shut up. <laughs> Natalie, how are you? Oh my god. I'm getting coffee. Should I join you? Do you have a minute? Yes, I'll finish up while you're... Great. I gotta go. What about... What's Friday like for you? Friday night. Kenny's got a gig. Okay, I'll be there. That's just my number. Okay, see you then. Hey Celeste, what do you know? It's so great to see you. You too. Where did you go? Where did you go? You dropped out of the world. All right, Olivia, it's your turn. <laughs> Let's grab the pickaxe and dig in. Where's she coming from? I imagined her just coming like from a work, like a middle of the morning break, because the scene said it was mid-morning, so she's going to go for a coffee break. OK, great. And then she... Where's she coming from mentally? Mentally, um, she had a, I, th I think she had a nightmare about Tommy. <laughs> or something last night, so she woke up kind of frazzled, probably running late for work, and then um, left the front door open, like, like just forgot to do like little stuff like that, and then arrived to work, and then went to the, uh, saw Celeste and went to the coffee shop. So she went to the coffee shop because she saw her? No, she was arriving and saw her, at, like, sitting outside. Has she it, been to work already? Yeah. She's I think on she a was. break? Yeah. Okay. Why does she stop? Because she sees Celeste. Mm hmm So? She recognized her from before they used to work together. Okay. Why, why is she going to talk to her? Because mm, now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> um, I don't know, because I kind of lost touch. I guess after you see a friend you haven't seen in a while, you want to catch up. Now think about the scene and be, be smart here. Is that her intention? No. Okay, I agree. No. What's her intention? Well, thinking about where she's coming from, like mentally, like we're talking about, like, I don't know, she's kind of having issues with her marriage, with Henry, mm -hmm. with trust. She's having trust issues, but she kind of wants to have like a certain appearance about her, like everything is okay. Yes. And what is she to you? An aunt. That's right. She's that low class, dirty, doing all the, all the little shit I used to do. And now I'm up here on the west side, mm -hmm. whatever she is, upper, upper west side. side. That's where I live now, and that's where I look down upon people like you from. Hey, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. 
Shall we talk? Look at you! Oh, still just the loser I thought you were. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How am I doing? Great. Married. How you? Uh, same loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. She's, yeah. she's a she's a B I T C H. Yeah, she's cutthroat. She's cutthroat. The only reason to stop and look is because she's a reality TV show that makes me feel good about myself. Which is why people watch reality TV. Because they want, they want to feel good about themselves <laughs> by watching somebody else who they think has it worse than they do. It's sickening. She's sickening to me. You need to play her sickening so that I can feel those feelings. So that the audience feels those feelings. So when we see her, we understand she doesn't have altruistic motives. No. She sees the limp and she wants to talk about the limp. She sees her and she goes, ha. Hey. Well, there's one way that can make me feel better about being late for work. I can make someone else feel small and then I can walk out. What happens to her after this conversation? At the end of the scene? Yeah. She feels like shit. And then? Suicidal. And then? She shoots herself. Correct. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that is society. Mm -hmm. You see how big this play is? You see how deep? Yeah. Suicide's an important issue. Mental health is an important issue. What we say to each other is important. And, and, and to, to come in and belittle somebody else to make me feel better is not okay. And that's what Shanley is trying to say. I love when playwrights push the envelope. Because think about what she's talking about. She's sleeping with a married man. Mm -hmm. She's talking about dirty sex. She's talking about all these things that make her into something that we don't want to look at. Yeah. She's bad. Let's just say that. She's bad. She's bad. She's, oh, me say that? No, no, I'm just saying, oh. let, like, let's, yeah. let's, let's okay. say that <laughs> as, like, as an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How bad does she have to be to make it okay for someone to belittle her so badly that she kills herself? There is no line. It's not okay. Yeah. You see what I'm saying and how important that is? So you have to play the bad guy very well here. There was, a, there was a play we were doing in the last master class where a girl gets raped. It's a part of the play. She, she represents your character, same idea. And the playwright wrote her that way, where she's on the edge. She's money hungry. She's, she's using her body. She's flirtatious. She's all these things. When is it okay, because she does all these things, is it okay that she gets raped? Never! That's the point. That's the playwright's point. So that character has to play all the way out here for us to get this, for us to get this across. To go, oh geez, it doesn't matter. It's just wrong. Like wrong is wrong, period. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're in a position now where you gotta, you gotta lean into this and you gotta be a little nasty. You gotta play the bad guy because that's how you do her character justice. That's how you do the play justice. That's how we get to these deeper issues. But if you're playing the surface lines, which is nice. See, she's not nice. She's pretending to be nice. You're pretending to have it all together at, at first. And, mm -hmm. you, and you're seeing someone who, who you know makes you feel like shit every time you see her. Mm -hmm. And you've just been talking about pulling you know, something yeah. out of somebody's ass. So you're going, I can't talk right now. Let me try to pretend like I have my stuff together yeah. here. So you don't feel great sitting down. You feel overly confident in such a way that you're going to come and, and, and pretend to be nice to this person that you feel like you're, you're better than she is. Can you, can you, can you play bad? guy, bad girl for me, in order to do her character justice. Yes. That's, that's the idea. The idea is I, is I have to tap into the part of me that I don't like in order to show that people are like this and it's not okay to be like that. And that's your job as an artist, is to, is to paint the picture. Yeah. 
You know, we, we, can't, we can't tell the story of racism without putting together a movie that has great actors acting racist to show everyone and go, oh, that's what it looked like. That's horrific. And if those actors were soft, they don't deliver the message the way the message needs to be delivered in order to make change. But actors change the world. Mm -hmm. Playwrights and, and script producers change the world and they change the way we think about things and that is a good thing. So here you are and you have this opportunity right now to grab a piece of really, really great, really, really hard writing and do something with it. And I know this is way deeper than you expected. <laughs> but you're probably thrilled yeah. to think, wow, I could study this thing for the next 10 years and not get to, to the bottom of it. That's exciting. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, let me, just, let me just go. Let me release. Let me do what I can. And then when I walk out of the room, let me get to work. Mm -hmm. The real work, the grimy work that gets the message out, that gets the, the real what we're trying to tell an audience here out. Okay? Yes. All right. Let's take a breath. Let's have you walk back in. From the perspective of the Upper West Side. Okay. Hmm. From the beginning? Uh, from when she walks in. Okay. Natalie! Can you hold a sec? Shut up. Natalie, how are you? Oh my god. I'm getting coffee. Should I join you? Do you have a minute? Yes, I'll finish up while you're... Great. Slower, Olivia. Do it again. Okay. I want to hear your thoughts. Sorry. Can we do that again? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was waiting for you to talk. What are you thinking on the way in? You weren't. It's okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> now think from that, from that perspective I gave you. Think, think from a place that's a little bit nasty. And then cover it up with a smile, but keep the nasty thoughts. Can you hold a sec? Shut up. Natalie, how are you? Oh my god. I'm getting coffee. Should I join you? Do you have a minute? Yes, I'll finish up while you're... Great. I gotta go. What about... What's Friday like, Friday night? Kenny's got a gig. Okay, I'll be there. Okay, see you then. Hey Celeste, what do you know? So great to see you. You too. Where did you go? Where did you go? You dropped out of the world. You look great, Natalie. You look really put together. I sort of am together. Did I hear you got married? Two years. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. So, it's, it's gonna be, the scene is gonna cook. Mm -hmm. it's, gonna be, it's gonna be quick, but we need to earn it. Okay. I don't, I don't believe you. Do you believe you? Either of you. The scene. The scene doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel like it's really happening. Okay. So, so, Monica, you've got to be, you have to feel super nervous. Okay. You know? She, that's like, ah, oh, you know? Like, she's here. Mm -hmm. um, all right, you know? And now, and, and you, you were being, you were showing the anger and the, and the bitchiness. You don't need to show it. You need to think it. So it's literally, I'm thinking I'm better than you. Hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny we run into each other like this? Wow, well, hey, should I sit or? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so. How's your husband? Ah, <sighs> rich. <laughs> <laughs> you still with, uh, what's that guy's name? Kenny? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're not with, you're not, right? I am. 
Oh, good. That's, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you must be married too, I guess, huh? Um, no, I'm not. So, how is work? <laughs> it's good. I'm very, very successful. Good for you. Yeah, got a promotion. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> yes, look at me. Yeah. You see how I put her in her place right there? Yeah. Because I'm waiting, and then I'm being a jerk from this power position. But it's all bullshit. In here, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just as crumbly or worse than she is. I'm just as dirty or worse than she is. But I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to pretend like I'm not. And once again, this is the play. Yeah. This is what he's trying to get across, is stop sitting up here on your high horse and looking down at other people. It's not okay. Stop pretending like you don't have thoughts. You do. Start, start being kind to one another. Right? So in order, to, in order to showcase that, in order to showcase humanity, we have to be this way. And it's, it's just all a little bit about my why of what I'm saying. And you can see how, I, how we kind of brought her right into the scene and you don't have a choice now. Yeah. And wh what did you see in my eyes just a second ago? You like looked down here. Why? Just like looking at all of me. I noticed you move. Oh. I did move. <laughs> and, and, and it mattered to me. Okay. And depending on my character, see here's the thing, if you move the same way but I'm a nice guy and I'm kind of a pushover and, I, and I've got a major crush on you, mm -hmm. okay, I don't sit like this. I sit like this. <laughs> now make the same move. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, she's pretty, like too pretty for me. You know, because all about the thought life is what's happening with the character, right? But either way, the move mattered. And that's that when I always say, like, never lose the other person because everything matters. And then just from my point of view, if I understand my point of view, I use it. You know, and you saw me being a little way, so you stood up to me, right? Yeah. Well, my character, if I'm playing her, doesn't get stood up to by people like you mm -hmm. down there below me in my balcony. Yes. Again. Should I walk back out of the coffee shop? Yes, please. Okay. Hey, Celeste. What do you know? It's so great to see you. Go You're back, Olivia. Patience. What did I do that was too fast? You didn't communicate with her non-verbally. Okay. I walked, I like walked right up to her. You, you walked right up to her. You were already talking. You, you, need to, you need to tell her a whole story the way I did. You got to look in, deep into her eyes and you got to, she, she should be feeling something. You have to do something to the other person. That's your job. Your job is to get a reaction from the other person. Okay. Go again. Hey, Celeste. What do you know? So <laughs> great to see you. You too. Where did you go? Where did you go? You <laughs> dropped out of the world. You look great, Natalie. You look really put together. Okay, sort good, of. good. So the beginning of was better, the okay. first part of the line. Slow down, take a breath. Find yourself to the next thing. Remember how you and I created the awkward? Yes. Okay. Create the awkward. Okay. okay. Do it again. Hey, Celeste. What do you know? So great to see you. You too. Where did you go? Where did you go? 
You dropped out of the world. You look great, Natalie. You look really put together. I sort of am together. Did I hear you got married? Don't be fake. Two years. So go, so go back. <sighs> A lot of these lines, you're putting them together, and they're, and they're not. So it's, 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 it's going to be a little like this, okay? There's a, there's a different rhythm than you're playing. Okay. Hey, Celeste, what do you know? You look good. Or whatever. What's the line? It's so great to see oh, you. Because it's not. No. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Okay. No. Hey, what do you know? It's so great to see you. There's a different tone there. You have to give yourself, a, give yourself the, the room to change notes. So great to see you too. It's like there's my aunt. That's right, and you feel it, and you have. She has to feel it, and that's okay. that's. It's your job to make her feel it. If she doesn't feel it, then she's not going to know how to respond on the next line. There's my aunt, and she's going. It's so great to see you too. Let me cower. You look good. She's what you she she's what you aspire to be right now. Mm -hmm. Get out of the hole you're in. Okay. And then she brings up everything that's wrong with you. Yeah. Okay. One more time, right there. Just stay right where you're at. Breathe, connect, take your time. Hey, Celeste. Well, what do you know? Now wait. It's so great to see you. You too. Where did you go? Where did you go? You dropped out of the world. You look great, Natalie. You look really put together. So you dropped out of the world. You dropped out of the world. Now wait. Okay. Because this is a whole nother idea. Okay. Find your way to it. Let the awkward happen. You dropped out of the world. You look great, Natalie. You look really put together. I sort of am together. No, wait. Don't, don't get cheesy on this line, Monica. Okay. Did I hear you got married? Two years. Congratulations. Thank you. You look so hokey stokey. <laughs> what does that mean? Sex bomb. I'll accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I will stop there. Good job, ladies. All right. Have a seat, please. So this is masterclass. This is what it's like, okay? If, if you want to know what mastery is, what it truthfully is, read a book called The Talent Code. The Talent Code. When I read that book, I went, ah, good. That's what we do. <laughs> It's start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, back, start, stop, back, start, stop, back. If, if, a, if an excellent, world-class pianist, piano player, is working with their coach, it doesn't sound like music while they're coaching. They go, and he goes, nope, back, nope, back. Good, keep going, nope, back. Okay, good, from the top, nope. And it's just these little, little tiny, tiny little corrections. That's what mastery is. So get used to it, get excited for it, start listening for it, and be ready to keep going, but take the direction and go, take the direction and go. The reason why we had to stop so hard today, it's your first master class, mm -hmm. and you did the wrong work. That's to be expected, that's okay. We tell you to dive into the play, and you, and you, you kind of don't know how yet. Mm -hmm. now, you, now you have a whole nother look on this, you get to start over, you get to dig in, and you'll do better in two days from now, which is great, and then you'll do even better on the next master class, whether it be this scene or a different scene, because now you know where to start from. And every play, every script, every movie you're a part of, you, you now get to have this piece of information of going, okay, this is how I work. I start here. I memorize for this reason, and then I do this other work, and then I put it together, but it's not about putting on a performance. This is about bringing two characters to life, and this is about bringing the playwright's vision to life. You get that? Yes. Good. So, 
What do we get from today? Let's talk about that. Um, just like the thought, I think the thought life is more important than now than I thought it was before. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I took that as seriously as I should have. I think I focused a lot on memorization because like Natalie has some huge, huge bits of dialogue and I was like, I got to get this, I got to get this, I got to get this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I realized now if I tried to go to that point from where I was starting, it would have sounded really bad. Okay. It would good. have sounded really, it wouldn't have been authentic. Right. Right. For sure. So, and the reason you memorize the way that we teach it is so that you can let it go. So you can let go of the words completely and just be living in the moment. That's, that's the why behind it. So I'm glad you worked on your memorization really hard. I want to make sure that you're continuously memorizing the right way, different ways, ways that mix it up so that the words are available to you. And that's not why you're scared. It's okay to be scared, just not for that reason. And I said this in the scene before, I want you to be scared, a healthy fear of not telling the story correctly. And you worry so much about trying to get the story across. Then you're not worrying about you, you're not worrying about your makeup, you're not worrying about, like, you're not worrying about the way you look or, or what people think of you, you're worried about the story. If you're worried about that, I'm thrilled. That's good, that's a good realization. Anything else? Um, I was like, I, I'm like intimidated by Natalie, and I think that's what it's what makes it hard for me to be her mm. because I'm not, I'm not, I didn't feel like I was like her because I'm not mean. <laughs> it's definitely it feels different. Now, is there a is there a, is there a part of you that's mean? There that's ever been mean? Yeah. It lives in you. You maybe you choose not to act upon it, right? This is a hard thing for us to grapple with as human beings, but for us to realize that we are human beings. And every emotion and every thought and every, all that, it lives in us. It's a part of us. And we try to evolve, we try to wake up, we try to connect into faith, and we try to get ourselves to a place where, where those things don't rear their ugly heads. Um, and it's hard, it's hard being a person. And then it's hard to acknowledge that these people exist, because they do. Because she's just kind of nasty. And, I, and, and most people have been kind of nasty at least once in their life. You know? Um, I don't think that she's, that she's mentally unstable. I mean, I guess in some ways she is. But, but, but she's not um, like medically unstable in such a way that, that she doesn't feel human feelings. Like she feels those feelings, you know? So she, get, like, she gets hurt in this scene, you know that? In this scene? Yeah. You'll have to find it. Yeah, I don't she know. Gets I hurt. Didn't, I didn't she gets hurt and that. she feels small. And she does From it to me. her. You'll, fi you'll find it. It's okay. Okay. You'll find it. But she, she is on the verge of crying. She's on the verge of being exposed for her past and for the stuff that she's doing. And then, and then because of that, what does she do? She gets nastier. She gets more hurtful. Because why? Because it comes from the hurt. It comes from the pain. You know, and, we, and we all like to think like, oh, I wouldn't do that thing. Like whatever that person is, like, I would never be that way. Well, you don't know. You weren't them. You didn't grow up as them. You didn't have their history. You didn't, you didn't, you, you didn't, your parents didn't treat you the way their parents treated you. You know, all that stuff. Like there's a whole history behind people, which is why ideally as actors and as, and as people, if we get behind other people's eyes like their characters and we try to see their backstory and we try to love them despite of themselves, then we can have a major impact, you know? It's different. It's different for me to judge you and go, I'm not like you and I, wouldn't, I would never do that. And to go, gosh, how much pain you must have been through to act the way you're acting. And I say this a lot, how much this would change the world if you did that with every person who's rude to you. The person at the checkout counter tells you off and they're mean and nasty for no reason. If you, if you respond by thinking to yourself, gosh, what must be going on in that person's life right now to be so nasty to a stranger? I feel so bad for them. 
gosh, they, they, they need a hug more than ever. I don't feel comfortable giving a hug right now, but I'm like, I just, I just want to be kind. I want to say sorry when I don't even have to, just, just because. That's a good thing, you know, to understand that people have backstories. And for all I know, that person's mom just died and they had to go to work anyway because they've got a kid. And the last thing they need is me to be an a-hole in the grocery store because they broke down. So if you give people the benefit of the doubt in that way, we get, all give each other the benefit of the doubt, that's a good thing, I think. So good. So now what you have to do, and this is uncomfortable, is you have to find yourself in her. Because you've got to play her. You have to bring that out of you. And you're not that. You, you, don't, you choose not to be. That's great. But you've got to breathe into it and you've got to find it so that, so that you, you've, got to, you've got to play that side. And it's nice because you get to express it and let it go and it doesn't have to define who you are. And that is terrifying. So I feel you. <laughs> How about you? What did you learn? I feel like I learned a lot. Oh how I need to be my character the moment I walk through the door rather than being casual and... You need to be a serious actress the moment you walk in the door. Okay, serious actress. Some people like to be already in character. Okay. That girl right there had got the same lesson. One of the nicest people I know, Saya Luke. She's also one of the most serious people I know. And I taught her this exact same lesson and she cried on this exact same stage for the exact same reason because she loves this and wants it and, and does take it serious. And she got the lesson. And she walks in as a serious actress and I don't think that she's less nice than she was then. Okay. But, she's not, but she, she comes in and she goes, I'm getting to work because this is my job, this is my business, I'm here to learn. I didn't pay money for you to be nice to me. You know, yeah. you, you should be, you should be pissed off if you come into class and I'm nice to you. Mm -hmm. That's the point. There's no point. I, and I'm nice. You know, I give critique from love, mm -hmm. from a loving place, but but you don't want me to pretend like yeah. something is what it isn't, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. Is you you walk in and you go, okay, I'm here to I'm here to work, I'm here to grind, I'm here to rub myself against a cheese grater and get better, and in the healing process, become, walk out of here stronger. That's the goal every time. And I gotta tell you, that's, that's my goal every time I go and, and I put myself in front of a coach who I know can bring something like that out of me in any aspect of my life. My only goal is to go and go, okay, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna stand in front of the train. And I'm gonna try to be as strong as I can. I'm gonna get knocked off. And then when I, but, but the act of me standing back up, mm -hmm. that's where the, that's where the confidence comes from. That's where the strength comes from, is that place. Yeah. And ideally, you don't do it in, with people who, who are abusing power or doing it for the wrong reason, you know, because there's a difference. People always say how hard this class is. It is hard, mm -hmm. you know, and it is, and it is gut-wrenching and everything, but it's not, it's not why you think. And that's why everyone says you have to experience it once first, because I can't tell you how it re is really, not really. Hey, it's hard. Oh, he's going to rip on you for this or this. And yeah, I will, but it's, not, but it's not about that. It's about you finding you and growing into something new. Yeah. And, I, and I can see, I, honestly, I can see in your eyes, you're already, on the, you're already in the process of transition. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. It's what I needed for me to get the little push. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you kick yourself in the butt and you go, great, no more. Mm -hmm. No more. I will be kind, I will not be a nice pushover. Yes. Two different things. Shay, yeah. Topol, signs off every email with kindness. She's a kind human being. That woman is a powerhouse and she is not a pushover, let me tell you. <laughs> she is a powerhouse. She's a powerhouse and that's why she runs the admin here because she, I know I'm putting a strong face forward. Is she gonna be kind to you but she's not gonna get pushed over and she's not gonna let me get pushed over because mm -hmm. I can be too nice and she, can, and she calls me out on it and I appreciate that. So, so there's a part of, there's a part of the, all of us that understand this concept. 
So, great, thank you. Thank you.
probably it was probably this. She does. Hmm? Testing, testing, one, two, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Of course, it is. Duh. We do so much crochet. All right, Brianna, can you test for me? It's fun to stay at the YMCA. <laughs> it's fun to stay at the I don't need a safe place, and I don't want to have any fun. But as loud as you'll do it, though. Yeah. As loud as I'll do it? Um, okay. I don't need a safe place, and I don't want to have any fun. <sighs> okay. I have a lot of loud noise, so I don't know. Sticky comes off. Okay. Sweet. Okay. G to G? G to G, Shay. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back. This is our third scene of the day. Um, we have two new people in our master class this month. This is Monica and Brianna, and they happen to be sisters, and they are playing sisters in the play that they're doing today. So we're excited to watch them. Um, thank you guys for being here. Those of you who are watching online, this is another excerpt from Proof, so you will be able to get to see two different sides of the scene with four different actors today, which is really cool. I'm not really sure why I'm looking over there, but I am. Um, so again, we're happy that you guys are here. Remember, no exiting or entering during the scene. Um, right after this, we'll go on a lunch break for an hour, and we'll be back, and then we have two more scenes for the rest of the day. Um, how are you guys feeling about the energy right now? Because I'm feeling freaking on fire. Yes? Yes. Yes. Still online on fire. Online is on fire. You should see the comments. People's fingers are like this, right? They're on fire. Um, yes. So remember why you're here. Remember you are here to make yourself better. Yes, we have audience members watching you and supporting you from home. And um, we're just excited that you guys are joining us today. So thank you for being here. Matt, take it away. Thank you, Shay. Okay, next up, we have actors Monica and Brianna working on an excerpt from the play Proof. Thanks. Feel better? Yeah. You look a million times better. Have some coffee. Okay. How do you take it? Black. Have a little milk. Want a banana? Um, it's a good thing I got food. There was nothing in the house. I've been meaning to go shopping. Have a bagel. What? No, I hate breakfast. Okay, good. This is good, ladies. I'm gonna I'm gonna go deep right away because you earned it. Hey. What what's the essence of this? What's what what are what are we really trying to get across? Um you mean as the scene as a whole or uh -huh. just how I'm feeling? Yeah, as a whole. It's just I go in expecting that I'm just visiting my that my sister's visiting me. I have to make sure, like, 
I keep myself okay, like, it has to be another day, but at the same time, I don't want to lead her on, like, if I'm feeling too weird because she knows people that could put me in like they would for my father, and I don't want to just deal with that. I just want to get through today. Um, and yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm just so, just a mess right now, so that's all I can think of. Um, my character is like not awkward but pretty fake because she just got some news and she's really worried and she has a million things like running through her mind beneath the surface I feel like but on the outside she's trying to like act caring and like act like she didn't just get news that she did right before the sister came out um, and just like being controlling and a little bit um, rude. <laughs> <laughs> What's the news? Well, that she's just as crazy as her father, basically. And the police came, and she was abusive towards them, and they even said, like, she's probably disturbed. So I'm, like, I, I don't necessarily, like, care, like, feel bad, but I'm, like, this is another thing for me to deal with when I, like, ran away from these problems. I think that might be what you're missing. Okay. Because I agree with everything else, and I'm, I'm just, I, I like to just question and see if you maybe agree. Mm -hmm. What was it like for your character growing up? I think she felt very burdened. I think she felt like she had to step up as a parent very young. 100%. Yeah. Now, I don't think the two of you are going to go toe to toe several times in this play. Mm -hmm. I think the why is because of love. Yes. Not lack of love. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like for you to do is, yes, it's another thing on your plate, this or that. Um, but I want you to receive the news as a mother, because you are her mother. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair to her that you're her mother, and it's not fair to you that you had to play her mother, but you did. Mom died. And so that's the role you took on, and you don't know how to not be that for her. And she's probably always been a little that way, mm -hmm. you know, and you always stuck up for her and always cared for her and cooked for her and did for her. So this is actually pretty normal Yeah. for you to think that, right? So what I would do is, um, yes, it's another stressor, it's another this or that, and you want to think, I, I think you're also, if, if I can get you to be in a, in a state of extreme curiosity. In the beginning? The whole the time. The whole time, from, from a mother's point of view who does care mm -hmm. is worried mm -hmm. and you're looking around and and so you're really looking at the stuff on the ground you're really soaking it in mm -hmm. why'd you buy all this food she didn't have any she had nothing yeah she had nothing in the in the cupboard in the house. What, what do you eat kid <laughs> alcohol when, when mom's away what, what are you eating do you order pizza for every meal? Like, what are, what are, what are you doing? Yeah. So, so, so you say, I, I, got, I got you groceries. And she's like, oh, thanks. Because you had nothing in the cupboard. You know that. Do you know that? OK. Yeah, I like that. You know, it, there's a curiosity to say, OK, I got this news. The news leads me to believe maybe she's crazy, which I kind of already suspected. I don't want it to be true. Okay. If it is true, I know what I'm going to have to do. Mm. I need to get more facts. Yeah. So this is a fact-finding mission. Yeah. And she comes out, and you, that way you can take your time. I don't think you're as mad as you were playing her. You are rude, but you're, but you're not trying to be rude. 
Yeah, I'm just stepping on her toes. But because, right, to because you're yeah. the mom that she doesn't want right now. Yeah, yeah. And you've got your own problems that we can talk about later, mm -hmm. but this is going to help the scene, I think, a bit. Yeah. For her to walk out, and what I'd like to have happen is, Brianna, when you walk out, um, why, why does she say better? Yeah, and, and probably because you looked like you haven't showered in a week, because you haven't showered in a week. Yeah. yeah. And she sees you and she's like, ugh, oh, the dirt <laughs> is off your skin. It's better. And, she, and you're encouraging her okay. with positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, let me compliment you because you know what? You need to start showering yeah. when mom's not here. Yeah. It's a part of your job, kid. Yeah. And you're and you're you're really listening. Like, is she hearing you? And can I trust her to leave her and know that she's going to be able to take care of herself? Because what do you not want? You don't want to be making another trip out here for another death. Yeah. It actually comes from love. Yeah. You sell the house from love. Yeah. You want to put her in an institution out of love. Her love. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. And you're and you're hard on her from love yeah you know mm -hmm. so that and I would take your time with all the stuff over here with the with the coffee and then wait she says she says sure thanks or whatever and and how though how does she say yeah but you're but you're looking every time yeah out of curiosity how does she say yes she'll take coffee uh -huh. okay is she crazy yeah how do you take it black like a crazy person. Like a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. Have some milk. How is she going to handle that? Mm -hmm. Deliver it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I have yes, Brianna. Yes, always. So here's the deal. No matter what your mom does, she's your mom. You love your mom? She ever made mistakes? You ever been totally mad at your mom? Yeah. You still love her? Okay, that's this. You haven't seen mom in a long time. She's here, she's caring for you. She's just doing it in all the wrong reasons. Weirdly, you want her to get the hell out, and weirdly you miss her and you, want, you hope she doesn't go anywhere. You hope she, she'd, she'd be here and, and, and be around and not be the way that she is. So there's this fight, but yes, you love her so much and you're so grateful for her, but, you're, but the way she delivers her love, especially in this moment, you're gonna have a hard time taking. Mm -hmm. And so you're not able to hear her say, I love you, you should clean up, you should wash up because you'll, you'll feel more confident. You hear her saying, you smell like crap and you're crazy, go take a shower. And so you're, you're interpreting what she says negatively, but yes, you do love her and you do want her approval. And you're gonna try so hard not to be crazy, but you just are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Better. Okay, go back. So, when you hear something back there, change. Okay. You don't want her to catch you. Worrying. Worrying, mm -hmm. paying attention to things, looking carefully. When she comes out, lock in, make eye contact, take a breath, communicate to her. It's gonna be okay, mom's here, mm -hmm. mom's home. And just start cleaning right now, and then when you hear something, change.
much. Thanks. Do you feel better? Yes. Excellent. I'm just going to say it. Better. Better. Much. <laughs> now this time, mm -hmm. let her come out. Let her look at you. Let her say non-verbally, hey, look at me. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I look good, right? Like, let, let her ask you, how do I look non-verbally? You answer her non-verbal. And I want, to, I want a lot of that happening. More okay. patience. Okay. Better. Much. Thanks. Feel better? Yeah. You look a million times better. Have some coffee. Okay. So now, now you're rushing though. Okay. So let's just go back to, uh, to uh, better. Okay? Just that right there. Better. Now wait. Yeah, stay on her though. Just wait. Better. Much. Good. Now wait. Thanks. Good. Now let her. Now let just let her be for a second. Go ahead and sit, Brianna. Oh, sit. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. And just watch her. <sighs> Try not to be crazy, Brianna. You got it all put together. You're good. Okay. Smile. Feel better. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you look a million times better. Have some coffee? You okay. How do you take it? Black? Yeah, and look, is that okay? Is, was black the right answer? Is that the non-crazy answer? Oh. Just no, no, be, be thinking that in your okay. mind. Black? Have a little milk. <laughs> <laughs> Now wait, patience, patience, patience. Do you want a banana? It's a good thing I got food. There was nothing in the house. Oh, Is I it, do you want a banana or have a banana? Want a banana. Want a banana, okay, good. So I, I would think, and we've blocked this different ways before, mm -hmm. but I would think um, that it's less of a question and it's more of you're telling her she's gonna have a Close banana. banana. <laughs> yeah. Because that's part of a healthy breakfast. Yeah. So maybe take your time, get the banana, walk it over, and then ask put her it down it. right in front of her, peel it, yeah. put it in her hand, yeah. and then ask her if she wants it. <laughs> okay. Just like mom would. Yeah. And all this nonverbal is interesting, so let yourself be patient. And Brianna, you keep smiling because you don't want to get caught not being crazy. <laughs> Want a banana? <laughs> it's a good thing I got food. There no, was... no, wait. Now look at her. Okay, now. Now, does it say anything about the banana? She doesn't eat any of the food that I give her. <laughs> Okay, so now maybe look at it and look at her. Crazy people, crazy people, um, or, or non-crazy people probably eat the banana, and you're thinking that, but you hate bananas, yeah. okay? And then you maybe put it down, and then you look at her like, I'm not crazy though, <laughs> and look up at her, and now say your next line. So wait, and then find it. Uh, I've been No, meaning... no, let Monica say her line about, oh. it's a good thing. It's a good thing I got food. There was nothing in the house. I've been meaning to go shopping. Have a bagel. Have a bagel. You can't repeat the line? No, I hate breakfast. Huh? 
I was just saying she can't repeat the line. Good, now just put it down. Now look at her with strength and confidence. Tell her, I hate breakfast. I hate breakfast. Now with a lot of voice, confident. I hate breakfast. You didn't put on that dress I got you. I didn't really feel like it. Don't you want to try it on, see if it fits? I'll All right, good. Now, the, uh, the online audience will not understand what I'm saying because our microphones are so good. But the in-class audience will know what I'm saying. We cannot hear you. Oh, OK. OK. okay. So it, and it hasn't been a problem till now. So just understand that when you're, when you're close to each other, in the theater, you still have to project in such a way that we can hear you in the back of the room. Right, OK. okay? Let's go back to uh, my hate breakfast. I hate breakfast. Breathe louder. I hate breakfast. Louder. And see I her. I hate see her. breakfast. Yeah, good. See her again. Do it again. Big breath. I hate breakfast. You didn't put on that dress I got you. Bigger voice? You didn't put on that dress I got you. I didn't really feel like it. Don't you want to try it on? See if it fits? I'll put it on later. <sighs> Did you use that conditioner I bought you? Uh, no, shit, I forgot. It's my favorite. You'll love it. I want you to try it. I'll put it on later. You'll like it. It has mm -hmm. jojoba. Mm -hmm. What's jojoba? It's something they put in for healthy hair. Hair is dead. It's dead tissue. You can't make it healthy. Whatever. It's something that's good for your hair. What, a chemical? No, it's organic. Well, it can be organic and still be a chemical. Whatever. I don't know what it is. Haven't you heard of organic chemistry? It makes my hair feel, look, and smell good. That's the extent of my information about it. You might like it if you decide to use it. Thanks. I'll okay, try good. it later. So, um, so there's a turn, mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, I'm sure you feel it a little bit now. There's a turn with the dress. And it, it gets to be like this, where your character pays the bills, she works her tail off to have what she has. How many times has she bought you something? None. She's not really saying thank you. It's, it, get, it, it gets to be frustrating after a while. Yeah. So, so I, I, I got you the banana. I'm getting, I'm getting you the coffee. I I'm, have a bagel. And she's like, I hate breakfast. <laughs> OK. <laughs> then it's like, <clears throat> The dress. Yeah. Why didn't you try it? Yeah, I mean, come on. All, like, like you could have tried it on. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel like it. Yeah. Don't you want to try it on? Yeah. You know, I'll do it later. Great. Mm -hmm. Then what's the next thing? Hair. OK. What's significant about that? Um, it's jojoba. Yeah. 
<laughs> what does that mean? It means that I'm like up. I like I care more about my hair, and she's it's like, probably I don't care forty-five dollar conditioner. Yeah. That she thought to bring with her. Mm -hmm. That she had it. Maybe she uses for herself. That she specifically put out to say, I want to share with what I have with you. Mm -hmm. It's 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 her love language. You don't share the same love language, <laughs> but it's her. It's your love language that you're trying to share, and she's shitting all over it. Yeah. And it doesn't feel good. Yeah. You know, so you're you're trying to go. This is expensive stuff. Like I'm I'm bringing you the best of the best. Yeah. It's got jojoba. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's that? I don't know, but it sounds good. Cool, yeah. right? Like it's a jojoba. She's like, well, and then and then and now now Brianna from your side. You're gonna to start to feel her frustration, mm. get a little defensive, okay. and you're also gonna win. This gets to be a little a little notch in the win department for you. Yeah. Because you know about science and stuff. Yeah, and I know what ho hopa is. <laughs> and she and she doesn't, and you see, so you're kind of like, I'm smart. She even says this, I think, in the play. Yeah. I'm smarter than you remember. Like, like she has wrong. one thousands or something. Yeah. So. So this is one of those. This is one of those times where now, and because and guess what, mom gets frustrated, right? Still alive. <laughs> Push them through. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's pick it up from, uh, let's go all the way back to um, the very beginning, but where she's already in the room. She's already in the room. Okay. So I'm sitting down? No, you're, you're right there standing. Oh. And, and let, let this whole thing build, okay, Monica? So now we're gonna, t we're gonna add a little bit of what you already had, mm -hmm. but let, don't, don't act frustrated have her earn the frustration. Got it. So hope for the best. Be curious. Mm -hmm. Try your best to help her to love her the best way you know how. I went out and bought groceries for you. Yeah. Come on. Let me try to cheer you up a little bit, you know? And then it's just not working. And the more you try, the worse it gets for, for Brianna. And Brianna, you keep getting trying to receive it, but you get more and more frustrated yeah. being cared for mm -hmm. because it makes you feel crazy. It does. Yeah. So stop it. Just be in the room. You eat the banana if you want the freaking banana, okay, <laughs> is what I want to say, but I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right? <clears throat> Better. <laughs> Much. Thanks. Feeling better? Yeah. You look a million times better. Have some coffee. Okay. All right, good. And we're going to go again because I know you and I know you've got a powerhouse voice mm -hmm. and you're not using it. Okay. We got so it. So use it. And when you use it, she'll follow suit. Okay. Because she's got a good ear. Mm -hmm. But she's following you down here and I need you to be, be loving, but be mom and be firm and be strong right now. Big voice. Here yeah. we go. Better. Much. Thanks. <laughs> Feeling better? Yeah. You look a million times better. Have some coffee. <laughs> OK. How do you take it? Black. Have a little milk.
Want a banana? It's a good thing I got food. There was nothing in the house. I've been meaning to go shopping. <laughs> Have a bagel. You can just get right to the line. No, I hate breakfast. You didn't put on that dress I bought you. I didn't really feel like it. Don't you want to try it on? See if it fits. I'll put it on later. <sighs> if you want to dry your hair, I have a hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm cool. Did you use that conditioner I brought you? No, shit, I forgot. It's my favorite. By the way, did you? I didn't. You did not forget. I did not forget. You saw it. You saw the note she left you. You saw the whole bit. <laughs> yeah. And it said, use the conditioner. The conditioner's right here. Like, it's right there. And you saw it, and you, and you very specifically chose not to use it. OK. OK. Because it drives you crazy that she left it in there for you, because that makes you feel crazy. Yeah, yeah. So when she asks you, now you're going to have to give one of those answers that's like, stop. No, shit. Trying, yes, that's right. OK. <laughs> no, shit, I forgot. It's good, but now land it on her. No, shit, I forgot. OK, and slower. Let yourself play different notes. See her. Find it. This is, this is an interesting note for everybody. I like to say, find the line. Sometimes we just say it to say it instead of, say, instead of figuring out how to say it. Mm -hmm. So don't let yourself speak until you know what you're trying to do with the line. So see your sister. No. See her. See her. Keep your eyes on her. You got to make eye contact. You're pissed. Mm -hmm. See her. See her. Communicate. Strength. Breathe. No. Shit. I forgot. It's my favorite. <laughs> You'll love it, Katie. I want you to try it. Thanks. I'll try it later. You'll like it. <laughs> it has jojoba. And the coffee's got milk in it, and you hate milk. What's jojoba? And you win, because you already know. Sit up straight. It's something they put in for healthy hair. Hair is dead. <laughs> what? Confidence, straight face. It's dead tissue. You can't make it healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's something that's good for your hair. What? A chemical? No, it's organic. Well, it can be organic and still be a chemical. Talk down to her. Do it again. Well, it can be organic. You moron. You, are you an idiot? Are you stupid, sister? Well, it can be organic, but it can still be a chemical. Whatever. I don't know what it is. Yeah, How and, and, and then let her, let her hit you a little bit more, Monica. So maybe, maybe when she gets like that, maybe go away, because you, you lose this round. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, go back to uh, what's a hoba, but you know. Straight face. What's a hoba? It's something they put in for healthy hair. Hair is dead. What? It's dead tissue. You can't make it healthy. Whatever. Can I, can I give you a note, Brianna? I'm going to see if you can play this. Mm -hmm. Big, firm, straight at her, monotone. Okay. Big, loud voice. What's jojoba? What's jojoba? It's something they put in for healthy hair. Hair's dead. Hair is dead. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, it's dead. Yeah. It's dead. It's dead tissue. You can't make it healthy. You moron. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's good for your hair. What, a chemical? No. <laughs>
It's organic. Well, it can be organic and still be a chemical. No, straight monotone. Well, it can be organic and still be a chemical. You moron. Again, louder. Well, it can be organic and still be a chemical. Whatever, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard of organic chemistry? It makes my hair feel, look, and smell good. That's the extent of my information about it. You might like it if you decide to use it. Good, now go back and slow down and you play different notes, because she wins. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to get nasty because she beat you. <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys know how that works? If someone resorts to hitting you, or they resort to bad language or something, you won, because they, <laughs> they couldn't retort. Mm -hmm. So what happens here is you get nasty mm -hmm. because she beat you in this moment. Yeah. So now you're going to rise up, take your time, and, and the way you say this now is a little bit rude. Now it's like, well, my hair smells good at least. At least I'm not like you, is kind of what you're saying. Oh, my <clears throat> It makes my hair feel, look, and smell good. And smell. See, see you see, understand that her hair doesn't smell good? Yeah. So you, want, you don't want to go, and smell good. It's, it's like all these things. Jabbing me. Yeah. That you're not. That's what I am. Ha! So, how are you? <laughs> it makes my hair feel, look, and smell good. And smell. And smell good. Ooh. That's the extent of my information about it. You might like it if you decide to use it. And then leave. Don't beat me or I'll beat you back. <laughs> Thanks. I'll try it later. If the dress doesn't fit, we can go downtown and exchange it. OK. I'll take you to lunch. Great. <laughs> How about Sunday, before I go? OK. Need anything? Like clothes? Or anything <laughs> <laughs> while look, I'm here. Look around, Brianna, and just wait. Find the line. No, I'm cool. <laughs> Straight face, monotone, do it again. Find it and see her. Yeah, I'm cool. You you delivered it the same way. Oh, okay. Nah, I'm cool. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll stop there. Good job, ladies. <laughs> it's so good when it's good. Yay. Here you go. Quote Matthew Deering. All right, have a seat, ladies. Let's talk about it. How are you feeling? Good. It was fun. Yeah. It was like draining and exhaust you, but in a good way, you know? Good. What did you learn today? Um, I learned that it's just more dimensional. Like, I was always thinking about, what if she says it like this or that? But I wasn't exactly questioning the right parts, like where I need to feel love, or even when I respond, I shouldn't respond it like this. I should re respond it like reacting to her almost. Yeah. If that good. makes sense. So, and I, and I want you to take that with you today, where I'd like you to... When you, whenever you're thinking about your work, go to, go to creating the person, not how you're going to say the line. Mm. So rather than me trying to come up with 50 ways I'm going to say the line, I just want to develop my character. I want to figure out who they are. Then when that character gets something happens to them, 
that character reacts a certain way, mm -hmm. organically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's the that's the interesting part there, and I and I think you really flew, Brianna. I have a I have a soft spot for you. I think you're wonderful. I think you're a good human being, and I think you work really hard. And and I uh, you know I just I, I know good things are going to come for you, and you're you're not. Um, I don't know. You're coming of age a bit, you know, and it's and I, I, I suspect things haven't always been easy for you, and and they might never ever be easy, and you know what? That's okay. That could be a good thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just I just want you to keep working hard, and um, you know, you've got a really good sister, like a really good. She's a good person. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. You relate to this a little. Are you you're, are you the older in this relationship and you're this, in real life? This play is like my life. We were much. just <laughs> talking. Yeah, we were just talking about like how we live this life, except our father isn't dead. But yeah, her words. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, and 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 th this is what's great about some of this writing is that we can relate. You know. It, our parents don't have to die for us to realize that we feel like a bit of a parent when we're the older child. You know, um, all of us have these different experiences where, you know, but Joey's told me the stuff, I have things in my life, Shay, everybody, you know, that you have these, these things that you can relate to. And that's why it's so, it's so important that we play it authentically. Um, yeah, what, what about you, Monica? What did you take from today? I loved the emphasis on waiting because I feel like when it's us working on it and there's not a third person, we feel like the pauses are too long because we just, we went from the phase of like just saying it back and forth super, super quickly, so making the space bigger to create more room for like body language. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't um, as focused on that, so I really like how that added a lot of dimension into the um, scene. Mm -hmm. Good, and now, now let's make sure why did it work? There's a lot, there's so many layers to what both of them are feeling that aren't written in the lines. Right. So you have to use the time in between. Yes, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. So, and, that, and, that, and this is one of those important moments where sometimes you'll accidentally, and you didn't, but sometimes you'll get the, the direction and you'll think, oh, I just go slower and then the scene's better. That's not true. It's only better if you understand why it's slower in a certain moment. And it doesn't even have to be. If you can have those thoughts quicker, great. But it's more like, I've got to give my character time to feel all these feelings, to be curious, to see the little stuff. So just going slower in rehearsal is not the answer. Mm -hmm. But slowing down and seeing if you can discover more things. And that's a good way even to critique one another and to grow together is if you say, you know, I was looking for something. I was trying to find something in you and I didn't feel it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it's your fault. It's probably my fault. But can we go back? and see if we can get onto a certain page, because I think I'm supposed to feel this way, and I don't. Yeah. Um, what about that find the line thing? Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Um, you usually say something because you're trying to summarize what you're feeling. So it's more you look around, and you're just trying to find how you say it. Or sometimes you try to find a way to allude what you're not saying, like what you're not feeling. Um, and when you find it, that's where it feels the most organic and you're not just saying the line. I hope everyone heard that. That was actually a pretty brilliant way of saying this. I'm gonna <laughs> rewind it and I'm gonna memorize it and then I'm gonna teach it. Okay. That's exactly right. That's what we do in life. We put all these thoughts in our brain and we jumble them up and we go, okay, what do I, how do I summarize this? And then deliver it in such a way that I can communicate what I hope I'm gonna communicate. And when do we get in trouble? When we, when we rush that process yeah. <laughs> and we say the thing we didn't mean to say mm -hmm. or when we're you know, in a different state of mind 
because we're you know on some substance or something or we're tired or we're or we're stressed or whatever and then the wrong thing comes out and I didn't mean that but now I said it mm -hmm. you know but yes that's that's exactly right so if we don't as actors give our characters that space to think all the thoughts that they're thinking and then speak the line if we just speak the line it's not truthful it can't be mm -hmm. So if you don't say, would you like coffee, and then follow up with a thought afterward, it, it, there's no way it could be real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and family members, that we know each other so well too, right? Mm -hmm. So you could walk in and go, you know, hey, how was your, what's the matter? Yeah. yeah. You know, just like that. Mm -hmm. It all, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was the same thing though. Yeah, you, would you like coffee? Yeah. And, and I could be thinking to myself, why are you being such a jerk right now? Yeah. But I'll, maybe only I hear it because I'm your sister. And I know the way you are when you're a jerk. And right now you're being a jerk. So something's wrong with you. Yeah. Then you're like, okay. How do you take it? You know, then that's the next line. What were you going to say, Brianna? Uh, I was just going to say it actually did help that we were sisters because we kind of understand the di dynamic way better. Yeah, for sure. Good. Yeah. All right, any questions? <sighs> None that come to mind right now. All right, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, Brianna, you sit down. All right. And then go behind. All right, I'm probably terribly out of focus for you online viewers. We are back from lunch. Everybody in the room, make sure your phones are on silent. All drinks have a cap. Don't spill anything in here. Um, if for any reason you have to leave, it must be an emergency and you cannot come back in the room until the end of the hour. Uh, next up, we have Dakota and Shay. <clears throat> okay, so we're live? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. All right, next up we have actors Shay and Dakota working through an excerpt from the play The Boys Next Door.
Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. My name is Norman Volonsky. Welcome to my home. Won't you take a seat? This is nice, Norman. <laughs> it's cozy. <laughs> it used to be better when we had those little rugs. Arnold's got them hid. Arnold? Ick. <laughs> He's not here, is he? Oh boy, that's all we need. Oh boy. Okay, good, you two. This is better. This is better. What'd you figure out? Um, from our talk yesterday? Yeah. There's about three rocks in my shoe. <laughs> and so I figured out that I, I can't play it if I can't feel it. Uh -huh. like you Where's said, it coming from you said, though? What, what? Did you do the work? Where's it coming from? Where's it coming from? I, I watched um, videos last night and this morning of um, people who are mentally handicapped and how they're trying to move around and do what they can do with as limited as, as they are. Whether, they can, whether it's their nerves that are locking their hand like this or it physically pains them to do something. And then you and I talked and you said that when your knee was hurting you, you tried to make it seem like you couldn't do it because you felt pain. So I tried to walk on the leg that I could, that I, I tried to walk so that I would feel the least amount of pain. Okay. Uh, there were parts. So, I, so, but where's the, did you, did you go into his backstory as far as like what What's the cause? No, I did not. Okay, so that's that's essential. Yeah. Essential. We need. We got to know why. So, um, do you have anything going with your hands? Um, no. I think you should. I think I should. Okay. Something. Okay. okay. We'll find it now. You explore a little bit. Okay. And so, so it's, it's, it's better, but it's not enough to have rocks in your shoes. You gotta know where, you gotta know where the pain comes from, specifically. So, is the, is the, is the joint locked? Is there, was it torn? Did it never develop properly? Is it twisted sideways on the inside there? Uh, you know, what's going on? What's in there? Because it's, it's, it's cellular, the pain. And so you want to understand it so that you can then, then act from there. Uh, Shay, what about you physically? She has this thing going with her hands. What um, is it? And it's like a, when she gets stressed or she gets anxious, her hands come up so she doesn't have Full, she has full mobility in her hands, but essentially with Sheila, she was given up um, and put into a home. And her sister, Susan, is the only kind of person in her life. But everybody else said sayonara and put her in a home pretty early. So she's been there for a while. Um, but that was, she, she can't, she, she doesn't speak right, she doesn't talk right, she doesn't walk right. Everything is just kind of awkward in the but, way that she but, is. But, t but explain to me the hands. It's, this, is, this is some sort of um, defense mechanism to her. So when we see with Arnold, it, everything that makes her nervous, her hands co almost come up like she's, it's a defense mode. She's coming into de a defense mode there. And it's just, uh, she's, she's awkward and she wants to not cover herself, but I like the hand motion because it allows me to but what is it specifically? It's this. Yeah. So, she, so she comes, she comes up here, like she's, like she's almost touching her shoulders, and what that does physically for me is I'm able to scrunch all my muscles together, mm -hmm. so it makes everything in my body a little bit tighter, which to me actually executes some sort of um, anxiousness in my in my body physically. Okay. <clears throat> so I like that choice. So now I have to go back to the same question, why? What's happening in her, scientifically, that causes that? 
and you may not know. Yeah, me like thinking medically wise, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. We need to know. Okay. So that's that's going to be important. Okay. So and I would think because I, I like that that gesture quite a bit, um, like this, mm -hmm. right? So then I would think that her, if that's where she gets nervous, mm -hmm. then this would be her default, down here. Same same. See this, mm -hmm. right? It probably feels good. And I like your mouth, what you're yeah. doing right now. <laughs> Biting on my lip. But here's the thing. She'll always bite on her lip. Right. She'll always have her hands like this. Okay, interesting. Now, when, I, when she's relaxed, she'll be relaxed kind of like that. There you go. That's relaxed. This, this is, is tense. This is tense, mm -hmm. tense. This is, you know, nervous, you know, mad. Right. All kinds of different mm. things. And, then, and it's not like she can't open her arms, but for whatever reason, this is like the same way this for you is neutral. Right. That's her neutral. Cool. Okay. And that's what I was going to think about him. What's his neutral? Okay, and so, so I, I, yeah, see, your hands are too relaxed, and that's why, like, something's got to be there, whatever it is, and then it, you can't come out of it. So then you can, you can come out of it, but then, like, that's, that's where you feel comfortable. You know how, like, over time we develop bad posture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden this feels more comfortable than this, and we have to, we have to go, oh, and we have to force ourselves up but then we're, literally our muscles get tired because we're not used to it because we're so used to hunching on the couch, right? So they've gotten themselves to this place where that's the comfortable and to, and to be like this would be uncomfortable because they're not, they don't do it all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, does she have something with her feet? Um, Non-balance. Okay. Not, not good with balance, but I also thought too, I, I put... I, I took what you said about the shoes mm -hmm. and something that I do with every scene and I've always done this is I wear a different shirt every single time I practice um, to find what shirt works for her. And this morning I found this one and it's, it's her favorite shirt and it says be a nice human on it. And then I thought about the shoes. and. I thought about dressing up for, for Norman, and this is this is a first time with her for any type of heel. Okay, so you didn't play that accurately then? No, I just walked like right. a normal human right. being. So so she'd have to be like kind of on her heels, figuring out how to bring it in, and she also when she's doing this feels pretty. Right. She's like, <laughs> and he's like, damn, <laughs> and you're like. Right? Right? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the scene. Okay. That's the scene. And, and, and you can't not. Right. If you ran full speed, it's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because that's how they move, right? No, it's how she would move if she's... If she... On, in heels, if she's having to think about it. Absolutely. It's just the, the idea is I can't, ne I can't all of a sudden just be good at it. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Well, normal people can't I can't be good ice at skate. It. I've never been. Right. You've never been ice skating? Or if I have, I don't remember. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm not going to say I'm good at it. Right. Matter of fact, I guarantee you'll fall. Yeah. Maybe not if I go really slow. And if someone started chasing me with a gun to my head, yeah. it wouldn't matter. I'm right. still going to fall because <laughs> right. I still don't know how to ice skate. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's what I mean about they'll never come out of it because that's just where they are. Yeah. Okay. So he'll have something there. Um, when she comes, when he hears the knock, he can be, ex he can be excited right away. It's Sheila. <laughs> but there's still donuts. I guess her, but it's tough. It's just like a tough choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I can't stop looking at those. They're so. Okay. <laughs> Would you like a donut? Because <laughs> you want one. Yes. So it's just. Oh, God. You know, make your day one of those because <laughs> wow okay there's a that's a part of him uh, and then yeah and then just take your time play you know 
have fun, patience, you know. Um, place is nice, Norman. It's cozy. That's a compliment. Mm -hmm. Used to be even better. Used to be better. We had those little rugs. You should have seen them. And what were the rugs? They were little ones. Like, what, what are they or where they went? Yeah, but what was on them and what stuff? What was on them? Like a tugboat? So like, I don't know. Like some weird, some, something you picked out. Yeah. You know, but, but Arnold hid them. Your roommate, for whatever reason, was anti the rugs. So he collected them all and then hid them someplace. He's like, don't talk about the rugs. That's your roommate. So he's, he's, not, he's not worried about Arnold until she reacts. So he's like, you should be even better. We had these little rugs. That's an exciting thing. But Arnold's got him hit. And she's like, Arnold. And you're like, yeah. Forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Right? Because <laughs> the same thing we know from the uh, picture, right? Yes. Jack takes it down. Why? Because he said it was too baby. It's too baby. I kind of like the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my personal opinion, yeah, it, I wasn't, like it wasn't that baby. I mean, I thought it was kind of cool, you know? <laughs> like, like, I like wearing Superman underwear. That's just me. But Jack, you know, he's his own person, I guess. <laughs> you know, that's the idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Dakota, tuck your um, micro microwave, micro, um, my microwave microphone. Oh, tuck it. Just, I just don't want it to get stuck in between your legs. Again, go again. Mm -hmm. Don't let me catch you, okay? Do not let me catch you, please. But you'll never, ever stop thinking about the donuts. They're just, they're always on your mind. Mm. Mm. She's gonna love him. Where is she? Maybe I should have one now, just tie me over. Okay, go back, go back, go back. Don't let your arm get, you, you let your arm get lazy. It was too easy. Do it again, put it down. Slow. No, that was too. That was too fast too. Even that, your 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 balance is too good. My balance. Okay. You're doing this, and you're going like that. Okay. You ever seen somebody who's like uh, my my great uncle used to be this way? He had. He had um, Parkinson's when he, in his older age, and he used a walker. He'd walk like this. And it was like the cutest thing you ever saw. So when he, when he got to here, my uncle couldn't go like that. He'd have to go all the way, and then down, and then, and then you are going to have to think about it. See, you're already too lazy. Now you're down like this. Now it's... Which one do I, now it's like, which one do I want? Oh, decision. Where is she? Okay, maybe if I have that one, she won't notice. But if I have that one. Like, it's like, and when you finally decide, you know, like, that's a thing. And then you're even going to go like, because you know you're not supposed to. You know, like Jack said, you can have one. One. 
Norman, how many did I say? One. One. This looks good. She's going to love it. You can have one. What? <laughs> and she can have one or two because she's a guest. Guests can have more than the, than the host. You can have one. You don't remember? One. One. How many of you had today so far? Tell me the truth, Norman. <laughs> Two. Whole ones? Norman, ah. <laughs> I was hungry. I know, but the, how many times have I told you? It's OK. Don't get in your head. Today's a big day. One. Sheila can have two. Good luck, buddy. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. <laughs> there you go. Hi, there you go. You got to start there. Okay. So, so here's the thing. If you're going to play this, her thing is this. Down, up. It's, it's a curled wrist. Okay, right there. Pick it up. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Norman. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. <laughs> My name is Norman Bulanski. Welcome to my home. Won't you take a seat? <laughs> this is nice, Norman. It's cozy. <laughs> it used to be better when we had those little rugs. Arnold's got them hid. Arnold! <laughs> Can you cover your ear, Shay? Ick! He's not here, is he? Oh, boy. <laughs> That's all we need. Oh, boy. Arnold Ick! Oh, boy! <laughs> Can I manage your coat? I don't have one. <laughs> oh, boy. I got to leave at 9. The bus comes then. It's 7.30 now. See this? It's a timer. It times things. Eggs in. OK, good. So this is much better. I want you to stay in character. Put that, put that down again for me, Norman. So. <clears throat> and just hear me, you don't even need to look because I don't want to take you out of character. Uh, you're checking in too much to, to notice how your words are landing on her. He, he doesn't have that ability to nuance. So he picks it up and it's like, that's what it is. And you can look at her, but he's not looking for the nuance of her, of her response to what he's saying. He just says, like, like that's like a... Um, 
It's like a new iPad or something. Like it's like a big deal. It's his gadget. It's his toy. It makes him feel smart. I got to leave at nine. The bus comes then. You're 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 examining her too much. Mm. So so it's okay that you look at her. It's not okay that you study her for nuance. Do you understand the difference? Yeah. You just feel. You just feel. So right now you're in a feeling. A minute ago was perfect feeling. It was like the uh, she's mad, so I'm mad. She's here, so I'm happy. She's worried, so I'm worried. All the way through. Like you gotta go at nine. Okay. How do I fix it? I got it. Here it is. And she's like, but here's the thing. He's like, here it is. Got it. Not gonna not gonna be a problem for us. Got it. Then wait and just let yourself feel. React big from big feelings. Big feeling to big feeling. I gotta leave at nine. The bus comes then. It's 7.30 now. See this? It's a timer. It times things. Eggs and... Eggs and things. <laughs> I'll just set it and then you won't be late. It's 7.30 now. I got to leave at 9. All I have to do is set it like this. On the 9, see? Don't worry. This works like a butler or somebody. My name is Norman Bulonsky. You're, you're Won't studying you take her, a seat? You're, you're studying her too much right there. Now, now, now go back to, go back to your, your secondary desire. Put it in your hands. Just, just your. Oh, okay. Put it in your hands. Speak from there. My name is Norman Bulonsky. Won't you take a seat? <laughs> <laughs> These. <laughs> I picked them. Do it again, Shay. You you, you lost your hands. Because it, it would get it would get more. I got you these. I picked them. Yeah, and yeah, it's hard. It's hard to not go up. It's hard, so hard not to go up. Not to go where? Not to go where, where oh, there. Okay. So it's it's going to be very difficult for you two to have these exchanges. Yeah, see, see what you had to do? She'll have to do that. Okay. She'll have to, she'll have to go, how do, like, I gotta get these to him, but like, this is my, like, it's, I'm fighting against myself. I got you these. Now big, big, she's, she's excited, I'm excited. <gasps> <laughs> and you can't look, you can't like you can't you can't stare at her. I picked them for you. Go bigger, bigger, she's big, so you're big, she's big, so you're big. You're welcome very much. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're pretty. You're welcome very much. Thank you. Thank you. I got them in that lot. Near the Getty station. You know that lot? Getty gas. That's good gas. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please like a donut? Yeah, I got you something. Oh, I got you something. So think about it. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Would you go, please go, like no, a no, donut? Go first. Go first. Go first. Go first. All the way there. All the way there. Would you please like a donut? <laughs> you got a jar or something you can put those in? <laughs> I got them on plates. <laughs> In piles, see? It won't fit in a jar. <laughs> Ears. <laughs> Gee, Norman, you're silly. I mean the flowers. The flowers? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I thought you were.
you wanted a jar for the donuts. <laughs> oh boy, I'm sure silly. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> 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 Good, don't keep thinking about your secondary objective. <laughs> Would you please like a donut? <laughs> slow it down, slow it down, because this is like, please. Would you please like a donut? I got to leave at nine. Real quick, real quick, side improv. Stand up, stand up, Norman. <clears throat> Norman. One. How many? One. Norman, don't. One. Now listen to me. You can only have one after she does or it's rude. You have to offer a donut to her. When she says yes and accepts and eats it, then she'll, she'll ask if you want one and then you can have one. Do you understand? You have to, uh, she has to have the donut first. That's polite. Well, what if she doesn't have the donut? He wouldn't think about that. Oh, okay. He doesn't know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's rules. Yep, this yep, is a rule. Yep. You understand it's rude if you, because here's what you would have done if we didn't have this talk. You would have eaten them all mm -hmm. out of nerves. Yeah. They'd be all gone. It's just crumbs. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to love you. So the idea, okay, Norman? She has to have one first. Do you understand? <laughs> Matter of fact, you can have as many as she has. <laughs> have fun on your date. <clears throat> Thanks, Jack. Okay, get back in there. I sure am silly. Pick it up from there. Oh boy, I'm sure silly. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> she has to have one or you get nothing. Would you please like a donut? I got to leave at nine. The bus comes then. Maybe I'll have one. <laughs> Thank you. Let me hear how much you love it. Let me hear it. Mm. More. Mm. <laughs> mm. You know, I call this one honey dip, but it's not real honey. I told Arnold that, and he said we should pick it. Maybe we should put them in a jar or something. <laughs> I'll get a jar or something. Norman, real cozy. We Why, don't... Why'd you turn around? Because she was talking and I wanted to pay attention to her. Oh, but you go get something, right? Um, it says in the play, um, he, he starts for the kitchen but is distracted. So we made the, uh, we went with that, I'm trying to get the jar, but she keeps distracting me so I want to give her my full attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did make that choice. Okay, cool. So, so then do me a favor, go back. I'm gonna give you one other note. Um, just careful with your feet, still. And when he puts the flowers down. Well, these ones. He, he's already kind of forgot. I know. That I, they're, I that they're special. I in and I was like, well. <laughs> so, what do you mean, what do you mean? I know that immediately as he puts them down, he, that's it, it, it's out of his No, head. Even, when, even when he gets up, because he's got the donut. Yeah. Mm. So what I'm, what I'm saying is like, it would probably be something like this. Let me show you. Like, she's like, she's like, we really need a jar. And he's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, okay, oh, okay, you know okay, I, I see, yeah, And yeah, it's yeah. not, it doesn't even bother her. He's not doing it to be mean. He's just like, he hasn't, he doesn't have, he hasn't assigned the value to the thing. He assigned the value to the feeling and to her. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I, I get you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Honey dipped. They call this one honey dip. But you know. Yeah, okay, good. Now, yeah, wow. Shay. What 
<laughs> I was talking to Shay, but. Oh, no, so, like, I'm going, sorry. You're okay. Uh, you can't stop thinking about the jar. The jar. So make sure that you keep looking at the flowers the way he was looking at the, uh, and then uh, why? What's our, let's, let's do a quick info. <coughs> Sheila. Hi. Your flowers died again. That's many, okay. No, how come I, how many times have I told you you gotta put them in water? But flowers go right back. I know they do, but, but, but we can't just keep taking flowers from other people all the time. Okay, you gotta put them in water, you gotta put them in a jar. I, I'm, okay with, I'm okay with you having flowers, but you gotta put them in a jar. Okay. Or something, okay? A okay. jar or something you can put water in and keep them alive or they're gonna die. Okay. Okay? Okay. Would you please like a donut? Pick it up from there. <clears throat> Would you please like a donut? I got to leave at nine. The bus comes then. Eyes on the flowers. And back to him and flowers and back to him and flowers. And it's like, what is it? Is he gonna, is he gonna do something? Maybe I'll have one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You dropped the, you dropped the piece. No, 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 don't get lazy. Mm -hmm. Put it back. Just look at it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's Norman what's Norman gonna do? And just and just just be thinking about it. Like that's that's really that that's that's like gold. Mm -hmm. And then you look at her and you shouldn't even be eating them in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they call this one honey dipped. But you know, it doesn't have real honey. No, get the line right. No. They call this one honey dipped. But you know what? It doesn't have real honey. That's not the line. What's the line? Um, they, call they call this one honey, honey dipped, dipped but, but it's, know, not, it's, it's not real honey. It's not real honey. I told Arnold that. Are he you? said we should pick it. It's halfway through where the crease is. No, forward. It's. They call this one honey dip, but you know what? It doesn't. They call I think it's, but you know what? It's not real honey. Yeah, but you know what? It's not real honey. I told Arnold that. He said we should pick it. this play. <laughs> yep. So uh, they call this one honey dipped. But you know what? It's, it's not, not real honey. I told, I told Arnold, Arnold that. Should, and he said we should pick, we should pick it. Why do they have him being distracted? When he goes to get the jar? He goes to get the jar, but he's distracted. Why, why is that so important? He's thinking about the donuts. Mm -hmm, but why is it so important that he's distracted? He's distracted. He, I, I won't give it away for the audience, but it's, it's for the blocking later when you come back. Yeah, yeah. So you can't be, you can't keep thinking about what you're supposed to be thinking about, or you wouldn't make that mistake. And that, and that goes back to my point in general about things just being hard. Like, you think about you have ADD or something like that, and how many times have you gone into the kitchen, you open the fridge or something, and you're like, I wasn't even looking for something to eat. Like, why am I in here? And you're, and you're thinking, and you're thinking, and you're like, you can't think of it. And then you go back, and you're like, oh, I forgot, it was the thing. And then you go, you know what I mean? Like that's happening constantly. So he gets up for the jar, and then right away he's already like he's already on to the next thing. Which 
would be Sheila because she's talking to him. Mm -hmm. well, it, well, it's, it's, it's also what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. She says, nice, it's cozy. And you're like, yeah, let's talk about my house. Okay, yeah. here we go. Uh, would you please like a donut or? Yeah. And, and remember, you don't get one unless she has one. So it's, it's like, it's like you're, you're begging her to have one. Like, please. Please. Like, you really want her to have one. And then, and then she doesn't. And then it's like, you know, I'll have one thank you. And then maybe you're checking in. Like, does she hate me now because I'm eating it? But, like, I'm sorry. Just, like, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. <laughs> like, like, I really love you, but, like, I had to have it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Would you please like a donut? <laughs> I got to leave at nine. The bus comes then. Maybe I'll have one. <laughs> Thank you. They call this one honey dipped. But you know what? It's not real honey. I told Arnold that and he said we should pick it. Maybe we could put them in a jar or something. I'll get a jar or something. Your home is nice, Norman. Real cozy. We don't have stuff on the wall in our home. We Used to, but Helen with the tickets paper sometime. It's awful. Oh boy, you bet. And go. She had a picture of God one day. God and his friends eating. <laughs> she just ate it. <laughs> we still got the frame, but God's all eaten up. God? She ate a picture of God? Oh, boy. One time, Helen ate a roll of toilet paper. You want to see the bathroom? <laughs> we got a nice bathroom. No, thank you. I went before. We got swans in there. <laughs> This is nice, Norman. <laughs> it's cozy. It used to be better when we had those little rugs. Arnold's... We used to have this poster, too, with kitties on it. But Jack said it was too baby. I kind of liked it, though. <laughs> <laughs> you want another one, don't you? Would you please like a donut? <laughs> Spaghetti for supper. <laughs> Have one. You can't help it. Take oh. a donut. Take a donut. You can't help it. <laughs> Take another one. <laughs> Take another one. Double fist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Now, now let yourself get emotional. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sheila? Okay, go back. Keep, keep getting emotional. Let him get you emotional. You, whatever he feels, you feel big. What is it? What I do? What I do? Like it could be your, could be your fault, Sheila. Sheila, are the flowers under me? Do you remember? <laughs> I got them in that lawn near the Getty Station. Getty gas, that's good gas. Sheila, I think somebody sat on these. I think I was just sitting down to have a donut and for us to talk, and I sat on them. That's okay, Norman. I 
feel awful bad about them, Sheila. Wick away. <laughs> hands, hands, tight, tight. Flowers grow right back. <laughs> Say I feel awful bad again. And the I, stuff. I feel awful bad about them, Sheila. And I have a bite of donut. Okay, Norman. Flowers break a lot. That's how come you get them free. <laughs> Would you please like a donut? <laughs> the one? Okay, I'm lost no, then. No, we, yeah, we got lost. Um, there was a we, line before there, when we, I say flowers, that's okay, Nora. So we got lost on the flowers. Yeah. So I sat. Um, so that's how come that's that's how come you get them free. free. You get them free. Would you, Would you please, please like a donut? donut? And then you. That's the I had spaghetti for supper. Yeah. Is there? Oh. It's probably because we went back. Got it. Yeah, okay. We, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And then it's the gift. Yes, then it's, then the, it's gift. the gift. Yeah. Okay, we're there. We're at time. Yay! <laughs> Talk to me. You. You big galoot. <laughs> Breathe, feel it. <laughs> Tell your truth. I got lazy with it. Okay. I feel like I could have worked. I feel like I could have worked a lot harder. Okay. And I should have already had all this done. Okay. So I feel like I let the the plate write down. Um, I let my scene partner down. Why do you suppose that is? It, if we just went in and out with it, I got tired of it after a little bit. I started picking up other things to think I would be productive rather than working on it. Mm. Um, I, I, I also got into a habit of reading acting books and plays rather than working on that. And because there was the three month difference, I thought I would be able to read other things and work on them. So I've been reading The Intent to Live. I've been making my way through that. Um, I've been reading plays as well. And I was working on those where we, I think it was the last time we were talking to you, you said you guys need to, I specifically need to work on the movements and why the character is the way they, is, they, they are. And um, I ended up not doing that. I, I told myself I was going to, but I didn't. Well, this is powerful. This is a powerful statement. And it's, and it's a huge win. Because you were good today. But you know you could have been better. And you know you were good because I did a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting for you. Right? A lot of the things you know you could have figured out. And, and I think this is awesome. It's hard. It's hard to be honest like that. Because you could have gotten away with saying it felt great. Because it was. It was good. It, it did. But doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, yeah. here's, here's what I always say. Like, if I land the job, you don't stop working. But I, but I didn't put 100% into my audition, that's still a loss for me. 
That goes in the LOSC column. If everybody tells me I did great and I get a good review, but I didn't put the work in, that goes in the loss column for me. Not a win. If everyone thinks I sucked, and the reviews are terrible, and I don't land the job, but I gave 110% and I grew as a human being, that's a win. That goes in the win column. You gotta start thinking that way, because you know what's true. Only you know what's true. So, you, you said it. Now you, have to under, now you have to go back to the why, and it's, it's either you're getting the wrong advice from the wrong people, you're telling yourself the wrong things, because oftentimes when we get stuck or when it doesn't go the way we want it to go, you know, we don't get the rehearsal with Shay or with me or whatever, and, and you're going, okay, well, I'll just show up when they do. Well, no. Like, you gotta do your work. You're responsible for you. And if you put in 10x the work, I mean, truthfully, you should. She's a great actress. She's put in 10x the work 100 times over. Not that she shouldn't now also, but I'm just saying, like, if I was on stage with Shay, I'd be friggin' scared. <laughs> I'd be scared not to do the work all the way, you know? Because I'd be like, all right, let's go toe to toe. So, so good for you for saying that. And, and you realize that that's, that is a human thing, not a good thing, but a human thing, which is to think the grass is greener on the other side. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you're reading Larry Moss, that you're reading The Intent to Live is awesome, but read it for the intent to live on the stage. Read it for this, you know? He, he, would, he would not be thrilled that you were reading his book and not working on the scene. I discovered this scene in his class. First time I saw it. Melted my heart. I cried. I loved it. Fell in love with it. Came home. Put it up. Been coaching it ever since. Love this play. Love it. And so, um, so that's a huge win for you. That's a big lesson, but a huge win because you're the one that said it and it came from you. And you're emotionally connected to it, which means you know it's true. It's not that you can't do other things. You're more than welcome to do other things, but you know in your heart what should come first, priority. And I gotta tell you, I, I don't, I, you surprised me with your answer. You surprised the hell out of me. And I'm thrilled about it. I mean, you're, you're growing here as a person. You know that, right? You're changing right in front of my eyes. And there's little things, little nuances, little this and that, and I keep giving you a tiny little, because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to throw you off the track, but I want to give you a little redirect here and there, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching you take it quicker, listen faster, speak less. You're developing really good habits, and you're becoming very useful. You're becoming very helpful. You're becoming the person that we want in the room. You know, that's that's a hard thing. And so. You know, stay, stay on track, don't beat yourself up, but do be honest with you. So now that you're honest, great. Now suck it up, take a deep breath, and get to work. And we learned a ton today, a ton, on the character, on the play, on everything. And you can take this, and then you can double down on it. Because I don't want, really, my version of it. I kind of want to coach your version of it. But if you don't even understand it, if you, if you, you know, and you, and you kind of give up on it because you're like, I'm, I'm bored of it, ugh, you know? This is a great, you should never get bored of a great play. If you're bored, then, and, and I'll, I'll just use harsh language here because, because you already said something about you, so I'm not saying this about you, I'm just saying in general. If you're bored of a, of a part, you're the one that's boring. I used to hear that all the time from my grandmother. <laughs> We'd be at the cabin or something, and, and I, I, I used to spend a couple months up there with my grandparents, and I'd be like, I'm bored, and she's like, no, you're boring. <laughs> my grandma was harsh on me, I love her. She told me the truth. She, she could see through my BS in two seconds. 
and I'd think about it for a second, I'd be mad for a second, and then I'd go out and play outside in the forest where there was cool stuff to do everywhere. And I was a kid and I'm like, yeah, what was I thinking? I'm not bored, I'm being boring. You know, it's a different perspective. So instead of saying, I'm bored of this play, it's like I've hit a place where I don't know how to work on it next or I just need to push through or I have to f ask myself, am I working on the right things? Because if you're working on the same stuff and getting the same result, you know, of course it's going to get boring. But if you're looking for new answers, looking for new ways to achieve certain things and trying to figure out the why it doesn't feel good, then it will keep being exciting. It was a good lesson we had yesterday, really good lesson. And it's funny because she, she recommended it and it was only 20 minutes or something, but that was worth a lot because it opened you up up here and then you did a little work and then still didn't go all the way where I wanted you to. Because I want you to know from a cellular level, from a medical standpoint, what, why? Because when you understand it, then you, you don't move lazy anymore. This is good. Proud of you. Thank you. Chaberhood. I think when I first picked this play um, for a master class, and I, I picked you as my partner because um, <laughs> I was allowed to do that at the time. Because <laughs> she's a powerful woman and get I, out of her way. Yeah. I said, I want Dakota, and this is the <laughs> play I want to do, and because it was brought up by Matt, and then I <laughs> started reading into it and started, started to kind of get into it a little bit, and then I just got so scared and just immediately fell into this horrible insecurity and I was like I can't I can't do this I can't do it justice I can't I can't do it right I'm so nervous that I will offend somebody and um which was just a challenge for me to to go into it deeper and make sure I did the research which I did do and I reached out to people and I said help me with this so so I can do this the best way I possibly know how to but I was really really nervous about um, not understanding it correctly, not understanding the physicalities correctly. But what's so interesting is today, the biggest thing I got from Masterclass today watching the scenes is you said, you have to want to do the play justice. You have to want to do the play right justice because they are the reason that we're doing these plays because it's their, it's their culmination of these beautiful words that we get to perform. And that's why they're so important. And, but my first thought when we, when we were sitting in this room picking out um, scenes was, I, and I'll be completely honest, my first thought was like, this is dope for me. Like, this is gonna be great to put in my skill set that, that I can be, that one day I'll be able to do this. Like, this is great for me. Mm. And genuinely, as yeah. an actor. And then um, I came back down from my cloud and I'm like, this isn't about me. This is, this is about bringing justice to this love story and how it's different from ours and how we use substitution and acting to, to touch on those similar feelings that these characters are feelings and, feeling and, and allow the audience to fall in love with us. And today I felt like that happened. You know, I heard the awes and I heard, hmm. I heard the smiles. Hmm. And there were a couple times over here that I thought I was gonna cry because I just, I was so emotional about the scene and just the biggest gratitude I want to give both to, to you and to Matt, um, but especially to Matt for, I, I, I seem to always do better when you, like I feel like you give me permission as a coach to, to go all the way, but this isn't the first time you've told me this. This is the first time I've just done it. Mm -hmm. But you've said it. You said, go, do, you know, you're, you're not doing enough. You got to do more. You're, you're two in your head. And this was just the first time I let go because I trust you always, but what I really would like to work on is um, trusting myself as an actor to know that if I let go and if I trust myself and trust that I know the play and I know how, I know the feeling, then at least I'll be taking a step in the right direction yeah. and I'll be growing. Um, so that was the most important thing to me is, because I genuinely look to you for that kind of look that you give me that's like, go ahead. And, and I, I appreciate that and I love that, but I need to 
have more confidence in myself as an actor and know that um, this is a safe space to do that. And I'll be, I'll be guided through in the correct way. Well, this goes back to the beginning of what you said. So what you said is really hard too, to be honest with the fact that you're doing a play about men, mental handicap mm -hmm. and that you're being selfish mm -hmm. about it. That's huge. Again, like I, I celebrate people when they're honest. And to come to terms with that and go, wow, this is where my mind was at, cool. I'm, I'm allowed, I'm a human, mm -hmm. I can think certain thoughts, and then I gotta go, okay, let me put myself in check for a second. Yeah. Let me readjust and go, okay, what's, what is this about? And once you're doing it for the right reasons, you know, you say, I gave you permission. I think the class gives you permission. True. I think this room gives you permission. Um, you and I had a really difficult conversation just a few days ago, and this, this world right now is going through a lot of hard stuff, truthfully. It's hard for everybody, you know? And we've had to, we had to move this class. And, and I look over here and everybody's wearing a mask. <laughs> you know? Strange. It's like, I don't know the world we're in right now. But I know this. I know this. And I feel like I gotta, sometimes it's hard, you know? I gotta trick myself, I gotta think to myself, and I gotta go, what you're doing's important, keep going, man. Mm -hmm. What you're doing's important, keep going, man. Because it doesn't feel like it all the time. And then we have days like today, and I'm sure you feel it, where it's like, oh yeah, it's pretty important what we're doing. Right. You know? But, but you get in the mix of all the stuff, you get in the mix of all the media, and you get in the mix of all the crap people are saying about each other and the whole bit, and you feel like, oh, woe is me, I want out, and then you're like, no, I don't. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? It's like a weird thing, you know? And, and this was special. You did really good with her, you know? Yeah. And I, I didn't, here's what's fun. Shay, is I didn't give you the physicality. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just was showing you how to maintain it. Sure. That's normal coach behavior. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything, you know. So, so, so don't put yourself down here and be like, this is this thing. You know, I'm not gonna deny that I, that I felt good about my coaching, yeah. like I did a good job, but it doesn't mean that you didn't do a good job as an actress. You know, we get to work together in a way right. that's fluid when you show up ready to go. Mm -hmm. So you had had this idea and then all I did was I just look at it and I'm, I'm always, and this is why it's so frustrating and annoying to be near me, because I celebrate for like two seconds and then I look for how can it be better. Right. So I'm like, ooh, I like that choice. Hmm, I wonder if this would be better. Mm -hmm. And we try it, that's, that's the way it is. And guys, I failed miserably over COVID. I failed, I told Shay this. I, I wanted so badly for our students to feel this, what we feel in the room right now, virtually. I wanted it. So I was like, ugh, we're gonna do what nobody else does. And we spent weeks, hours, my, this team slaved like crazy, 20 hour days to create tech that was new and different and unique that no acting school had ever done before. And then the other day I taught a class virtually on a Zoom, just the, just the computer, I hit go, and we kept everybody in the same room in the same space virtually, and I was like, this is better. Damn it. <laughs> like, it's just better. I'm like, the coaching is better. We're connected, like it's a, it's a community. And I'm like, okay, I was wrong, you know? But, but my why was okay. I wasn't trying to be selfish, I wasn't trying to be about me, I was trying to go, how can we lift up the students? Well, it turns out, you know, I just didn't see it. Okay, I can take the note and move forward. So you should take the note, both of you, move forward, but it doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It just means like, okay, here's where I am. Like, think about you, Dakota. The thing you screwed up on, I mean, your big major fail is that you kept working on your acting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's good. That means you moved your floor. Yeah, you're right, it's wrong what you did. You should be emotional about it and you should pick up and grow because you don't want to be always moving on to the next thing before doing this thing very, very well. Okay. Were you lazy? Yes. But your form of laziness was reading a book. Cool. <laughs> so, so we don't beat ourselves up. We acknowledge the truth. 
and then we move forward stronger, better than we were before. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got one scene Why don't you left. Grab the, um, the yeah, the swiffer. Yeah. Yes, they are going to use a, uh, this exercise for you, huh? Thank you. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. I was watching you operate. I didn't know. Whatever you got, I'm impressed. Thank you. That was great. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for that feedback because that's really important to me. So thank you, like hugely. I'm use the restroom while there's nobody in there. Thank you. There's, I'm probably on still, right, audio? Thank you. I'm gonna I'll mute me. No, no, no. Thank you.
Actors ready? Ready? Yes. All right. Here we are. Welcome back. This is our last scene of the day. <laughs> Joey's his own sound effect. I love it. So I'll try to take a few questions at the end. Maybe we'll pick one from online. If somebody has a question online, they're watching, you can go ahead and send that in. We'll try to take one online question if we can before we wrap for the day. And then we will be back on Saturday. On Saturday, we see the ongoing work of these actors, what they're able to accomplish in a 24-hour period. They will bring back their scenes based on the critique that was given, and you'll get to see them having leveled up in just two days. So that'll be a lot of fun. All right, here we go. Last scene. We have actors Brian and Saya working through an excerpt from the play Barefoot in the Park. I don't believe you. I wasn't there yet. <laughs> so you gotta get, you gotta already be there. Just be there. What, where's there? There is just carrying someone up a bunch of stairs. Okay, so be there. Tired so be there. Walk. There. Well, how about that, mister? This is going to be a fiasco tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking her all the way out to New Jersey. <laughs> At two o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's what I call the complete gentleman. Good. So I, I, I apologize because we had a lesson and I forgot at the end of the lesson that I think I, I think that line's funny and I didn't what realize line? it till recently. What line? That's what I call the complete gentleman. Mm. Think about it. What do you call the complete gentleman? Like taking a girl a back to his, back to her <laughs> own place <laughs> <laughs> to New Jersey at two in the morning, the night he met her, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not mooching off everybody all night. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, I think actually staying with him and having one of those moments like, what a gentleman. Oh, okay, okay. Because yeah, that yeah, would annoy yeah, the yeah. crap out of him. Mm, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> <laughs> what I call a complete gentleman. No, nope. Brian. Hey, so, so you don't have to do that. You just be. Just be tired. Let her do what she's going to do and she'll leave. But if you shove her off, you, you cease to be the good guy. That makes sense. Right now, <laughs> You've got the upper hand as long as you don't turn into a complete jerk. Mm -hmm. Right now, if the audience has been watching, she's in the wrong and you're in the right. But if you go like that, you're in the wrong, we hate you immediately. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. She's being funny and being whatever and it's annoying you. And we know if it were us, it would annoy us too, which is why we're laughing. You're, you're not losing power right now. You look handsome and sexy, and there's a woman all over you, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and he's just like, she's just drunk and being ridiculous, and and you've had to deal with her flirting with other guys all night, and then her mother, and and you're just like, you're done, you're tired, you're done. I'm gonna go to bed, and I want you to say sorry before I go to bed. Say sorry, cool. Come home tomorrow, we'll be fine. So let her be cute all she wants and, and don't shove her off. You can be annoyed, but it's all internal. Got it. Let's start from the top.
well. <laughs> How about that, Mr. This is going to be a fiasco tonight. <laughs> He's taking her all the way out to New Jersey at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's what I call the complete gentleman. <laughs> All right, good. Again, Saya, um, I like your drunk. She's playful, mm -hmm. but but be be more intentional this time. Feel real feelings. Just feel them bigger. Mm. Oh, that's a good way of putting it. Well, <laughs> how about that, <laughs> Mr. This is going to be a fiasco tonight. <laughs> He's taking her all the way out to New Jersey <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's what I call the complete gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even given a thought about how he's going to get home. <laughs> Maybe he'll sleep over. <laughs> hey, Paul. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not my mother. Then again, anything can Go happen. Go do it again. It's great. A uh, little louder for Paul. And then use your, use your prop and physicalize. Right, no, right where you are. The prop you have works just fine. Physicalize what you're talking about. Okay. Do you think? <laughs> Paul! Do you think? Now, now use, the, use the tool that you have. How can you use that to be something that it's not? No. Not my mother. Then again. Try again. That, I'll give you a hint, that part's the penis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> OK. Paul, do you think? Look at it. <laughs> no, <laughs> not my mother. Then again, it pops up to attention. Anything can happen with the chic of Budapest. <laughs> Boy, what a night! Hey, I got a plan. Let's take the bottle of scotch <laughs> downstairs, ring all the bells, and he yell, Police! <laughs> Just to see who comes out of whose apartment. Don't throw it away. Just to see who comes out of whose apartment. <laughs> Paul! Mm, what's the matter, darling? <laughs> Don't you feel well? What a rotten thing to do to your own mother. What? Do you have any idea how she felt just now? Do you know kind of a night this was for her? It's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, invite him. You didn't see her sitting here two minutes ago. You were upstairs with that Hungarian Duncan Hines. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
She was miserable. Her face was longer than that trip we took tonight. But that was pretty long, Brian. Do it again. I couldn't hear you. What? When you're talking about the trip? Oh, yeah. There's, there's very few things in the world that are longer than that trip we took tonight, which ended with me walking up eight, however many flights of stairs. Her face was longer than that trip we took tonight. <laughs> she never said a thing to me. She's too good a sport. She went the whole cockeyed way. Do it again, Brian. You're performing. Just do the tie. Is the microphone? Uh, Brian's? Yeah. Stand by. Brian's microphone went out. Mm -hmm. No, I just can't hear. It, it seems like it's um. Talk. It seems like to me that I can't hear him. Gotcha. Talk, Brian. What am I talking about? Oh, I didn't mean to undo the tie. <laughs> what a rotten thing to do Wait, to your own mother. So, so, Brian, do you understand the note? I do, yeah. Okay. I, I wasn't present. Okay. Yeah. Then, and if you are present, you'll see her. There are times when you need to talk to her, like, like at her, and times you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you have the upper hand, there's no reason to keep going to her. And, and you specifically want what? To sleep. That's right. But you can't sleep until what? She says sorry. And? And I get undressed. Yeah. And? I get upstairs. Well, there's something else that has to do with <laughs> getting undressed. I don't know where you're going with this. You can't sleep. You can't fall asleep if you know that your tie is not being pressed while you sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't fall asleep unless you know your clothes are hung up just right, crease just right, turned just right, you can't fall asleep because your mind won't let you. Mm -hmm. So you have very specific tasks that you have to get done that actually have less to do with her, you being down here, and more to do with I'm trying to go to bed, mm -hmm. going to my next task. Got it. You know what I'm saying? He, he wouldn't in a million years go upstairs, take everything off in the room, and fall asleep. Right, never. Yes, Ever. You're right, yeah. So that's why he's down here. Yep. And while we're down here, I might as well tell you, you're kind of awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what's happening. So yeah. that's, that's what I mean by when we get to our why, when we come down, if she's wherever she's at, you have a major task you're trying to get across because without getting through that obstacle, you can't get to your... <laughs> You're really your main objective right now. Yeah, you'd love to hear sorry, but it's also to go to bed. Mm -hmm. You're tired. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Take it from where? Um, can you pick up Joey? Probably. <laughs> Great. Carry yeah. him across the room. Across the room. Okay. <laughs> Go toward the stairs. <laughs> slow, slow, slow. Don't drop him. I'm trying. That's her mother. <laughs> you got to get her up the stairs because she's drunk, and, and she's in that state, and she's about to go to. She's about to go across town. Okay, good. That's the kind of tired you are. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Joey. Let's give Joey some love. Okay, now take off the tie and you want to go to bed because you're tired. And you know what? And, if, and if, you, if you don't act tired, I'll make you pick me up. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> okay. She was longer than that trip we took tonight? It was longer than that trip we took tonight. She never said a thing to me. She's too good a sport. She went the whole cockeyed way. 
Boy, oh boy. Dragging a woman like that all the way out to the middle of the harbor. <laughs> For a bull to shake dip. Ah, no, see that away. For a bull. For. For a bowl of sheep dip. It was Greek bean soup, and at least she tasted it. She didn't. So, so I, I just don't like you there. Okay. Well, it I says don't... that she goes to the desk. Oh, okay. Falls, falls him there. So, maybe go there, but, but. Not so in his face. Yeah, I'm having a hard time with that. So, so why? Now you have to ask yourself why. Well, he's obviously not paying attention to her. Okay. So I think she wants, and then again with what you say, you don't look at people that you want them to look at you. Okay. You get him to look at you, okay. not you. So right. you can go to the desk, but now do it, do whatever you need to do to get his attention, but you want him looking at you, hopefully without having to take away what he's doing. Okay. Give me, uh, give me another line. Yeah. Okay, I will continue to speak about how tired I am because you are a heavy person. Well, actually, you're not so that heavy. I'm yeah, just so kidding. That. I turned him down on here. You're not that heavy. I just don't have a very good grip. No problem. <laughs> just keep going. You just kept slipping out of my little half fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it was very challenging and difficult. <laughs> and this is how I would tie this tie. Okay. Glad we settled that. <clears throat> All right, go ahead, Brian. Longer than that trip we took tonight. It was longer than that trip we took tonight. She never said a thing to me. She's too good a sport. She went the whole cockeyed way. Boy, oh boy, dragging a woman like that all the way out to the middle of the harbor for a bowl of sheep dip. It was Greek bean soup. <laughs> and at least she tasted it. She didn't jab at it with her knife, throwing cute little epigrams. Good. Like so now act it out and make him. Oh. So he. So he watches you like a picture show. Uh, she didn't jab. At but you don't have to look at him. See, like, like, give him permission to look. She didn't jab at it with her knife, throwing cute little epigrams. No, but do, do it for real. So like, oh. so that he can see it. And then Brian, look. Okay. So turn. So turn. So yeah. So you'll turn this way. Right? And, and what is it? It's soup, right? Yeah. So now, be him. Mm. And what did oh. he do? Oh, okay. Yes. You know, that's what he did. Yes. And it was annoying to you. Yeah. The whole night. It's like, just have fun, you fuddy-duddy. Yeah. Just try the soup. Okay. Try something. Be new. Be like, do something interesting. Yeah. What, do you want a burger with ketchup? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Got it. All right, that's cold. <laughs> now watch her, because she's going to make fun of you. Can you say your line before my line? Maybe. <clears throat> and and, and the, char the character you're playing with doesn't have fingers. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All the way out to the middle of the harbor, for a bowl of sheep dip. It was Greek bean soup. And at <laughs> least she tasted it. She didn't jab at it with her knife, throwing cute little epigrams like, ho, 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 ho. I think there's something in there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. At least I was honest about it. No, no. So now you got to do the same thing. See, now you're getting in her face. That's right. That's right. 
At least I was honest about it. Now you look at him, Syed. Now wait, Brian. Wait. Wait. Don't you want to act it out back? Don't you want to win the act out contest? What did she do? How, did, how was she physically? You ate two bowls because you were showing off. How? How was she showing off? Showing off. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, no. You be her the way she was you. How was she showing off with her body physically as a woman? At least I was honest about it. You ate two bowls because you were showing off for Al Capone at the next table. What are you so angry about, Paul? Okay, good. So, so this, is a, uh, this is just a lesson point. It's not right or wrong. Um, as a matter of fact, it might very well be wrong. But what I was trying to get at, Brian, is with her, I want her to act it here the whole way because it's super annoying. Mm -hmm. Right? So sit for me, please. Um, what's something Brian does, anybody? A thing. Uh, he, picks oh, he does do that a lot. Nail. Oh, the face. He picks at his only nail? Yeah. <laughs> I do do that. <laughs> at least I wasn't picking at my only nail. All day long. <laughs> then you, it's like, yeah, okay. At least I wasn't going off, right, to her. Al Capone at the next table. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So you, if, you, if you go to her too soon and you don't put the full act into it, then you don't get to play that game. Mm -hmm. So it's only there, and that's why I said it might be wrong, but it's only there because she did it. Now, if you're going to do it, you've got to follow through all the way. Sure. But if I go, showing off for Al Capone at the next table, it doesn't have the same hit, for, in, if you, unless you go all the way to the end and then make the move. Got it. So let's have you do it. Okay. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. At least I was honest about it. You ate two bowls. You got more and more, Brian. You ate. Keep going. Good. Now fix your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> but don't look at her. Don't look at her because then she can't keep looking at you. Do it again. Start over. That's right. That's right. <laughs> At least I was honest about it. You ate two bowls because you were showing off for Al Capone at the next table. Not quite. Go again. I don't know what the answer is because I'm not sitting in your chair. Mm -hmm. So I could walk over there, but I'm thinking you, you're going to have to find a way to get her attention without looking at her, look at her when it's appropriate, but only looking at her to win. And then you really get the idea here is how do I make fun of you? How do I physicalize your behavior? So what is it about her behavior that you can make fun of? Okay. Her physicality, her drunkenness, her whatever. What is it that she should be ashamed of? Because she did the thing at you, so what are you going to do back? It's a tennis match. Mm -hmm. And if you turn your back to her, she won't see you. So it's almost like, like if I wanted to make Shay mad and I wanted her to see me, I'd probably keep Shay in my peripheral vision. And then I'd go, I'd do something that Shay, you know, make fun of Shay and then <laughs> make sure she sees me. Well, she's looking in the camera, so that's good enough. You know what I'm saying? I do. So that's what you can do. So it's not, it's not for us. It's for her. But you don't want to be looking at her because you want, you want her to get mad. And she won't, she won't give you the satisfaction of being mad. 
Mm -hmm. So if you look at her, you won't you won't win. Got it. Okay, go win. That's right. That's right. <laughs> at least I was honest about it. You ate two bowls because you were showing off <laughs> for Al Capone at the next table. <laughs> what are you so angry about, Paul? I just told you. I felt terrible for your mother. Threw it away. I just told you. I felt terrible for your mother. Good. And why are you really mad? Because she's annoying. But really? Really? She's yeah. annoying me. Yeah, that's deeper. She's annoyed, not in this specific instance. I mean, since the beginning of the marriage, she's continued to be a, like meh, meh, meh on the side of my shoulder and made every wrong decision. But you that's could. also what you fell in love with her about. Two. Okay. I fell in love with her because of her spontaneity, which is close to that. Spontaneity, yes. Spontaneity. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's kind of the same thing. Like, it's, it's there. Like, there's something about that that's cute. It's not cute when it's too much. It's not cute when it's drunk and it's all night and she never comes out of it. But she makes you feel attractive. Okay. You know? So don't lose the love. Don't just throw the whole thing out. I think, this is my guess, what are you so mad about? You just said it. You're not giving me attention tonight. Showing off for Al Capone. That means she's, she's flirting with other guys. She's flirting with the geek. Mm -hmm. She's not respecting you as a man. You want to bring the G-O-D in this thing. He calls women to respect men and men to love women. Because women love instinctually and men respect instinctually. That's why he's calling you to do it because he knows it's not easy. So right now, you, you want her to respect you and truthfully, she doesn't. She thinks you're a fuddy-duddy. So you're saying you're mad about the mom, but really, it's deeper. And it's not just she's annoying you, it's like, this hasn't been a very good night for me. Mm -hmm. And you don't care. You don't respect me. You yeah. take me all the way across town. I carry your mom upstairs. You don't say thank you. All you go on about is this other dude who you're flirting with all night. You're drunk. You're flirting with other guys. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And she doesn't feel loved because he's not willing to take his hair down or whatever she says, right? I mean, like he's not willing to, to relax and to be They're silly and fun and, and let you into who he really is. You know, yeah. he's got everything, everything perfect. And also, both of us are not feeling paid attention to by each other because he, I feel like he's more focused on his case and court and all this stuff right. too. And, he, and I'm more focused on everything else. Um, so I think we both have that feeling. It's just we're not sharing it. Too. Right, right. And he's trying to love you by going out there and making money. And you're like, just say, I love you. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I, like well, I, don't, I don't need more than this place. Like, this is, I just want love. Yeah. And he's going, baby, I need respect. I got to get out there and go get respect. So that's, that's you're right. That's it. They're, they're, having, they're having a marriage thing. But that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just one of those deep lines I wanted to make sure you got, and I don't think you did. Mm -hmm. That when she says, what's, what's the, the matter? Or, you know, what's, why are you so mad? It's not what you say. You say it anyway, but it's not really what you say. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. How, how many times has someone said, why are you upset, dude? And you're like, I already told you. It's because of this, but it's not really. Yeah. Deep down, it's like, I feel like you hurt me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. Let's pick it, pick it up from why are you so mad. What are you so angry about, Paul? 
I just told you I felt terrible for your mother. <laughs> Why? Where is she at this very minute? Alone with probably the most attractive man she's ever met. Do it, again. Do it again, Saya, and give him permission to look at you. Oh, yeah. And let me, let me, <laughs> let me see and understand that you think he's attractive, too. Mm -hmm. And then, Brian, you, you, you can hear that and be like, you know what I mean? Mm hmm and, and, and just, let's just say he is better looking than you. Okay. So it'll suck. Why? <laughs> Where is she at this very minute? Alone was probably the most attractive man <laughs> she's ever met. <sighs> Don't tell me that doesn't be hell out of hair curlers in the Late Late Show. Oh, I can just hear it now. What sparkling conversation. He's probably telling her about a chicken cacciatore he once cooked for the high love of Tibet. And she's sitting there shoving pink pills in her mouth. <laughs> you never can tell what people talk about when they're alone. I don't understand how you can be so unconcerned about this. Unconcerned? I'm plenty concerned. Do you think I'm going to get one wink of sleep before that phone rings tomorrow? I'm scared to death for my mother. But I'm grateful there's finally the opportunity for something to be scared about. Good, now leave. Go get a drink. Jerk. Ah, good idea. Let me go get him. Go get him, go get him, go get him. Don't worry about, now, don't, now don't worry about the drink. You were only getting a drink because you, you wanted a drink and now you're going, oh, I can, I can win this argument. What I'm really concerned about is you. Me? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if you're capable of having a good time. Yeah, you didn't need to look back. I'm beginning to wonder if you're capable of having a good time. Why? Because I like to wear my gloves in the winter? No. Because there isn't the least bit of adventure in you. Now you get to act it out again. Put on a show. Do you know what you are? <laughs> You're a watcher. There are watchers in this world. And there are doers. And the watchers sit around watching the doers do. <laughs> well, tonight you Watched, and I did. Yeah? Well, it was a lot harder to watch what you did <laughs> than it was to do what I was watching. You won't let your hair down for a minute. You couldn't even relax for one night. All right, we got to stop there and talk about it. <laughs> Audience, what, what is bothering you right now? Anybody? Anybody? Shay? Nothing? The tie, the tie, the tie, the tie, the tie. Oh yeah. He would never leave the tie there. He would, would never, never leave the tie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. 
<laughs> I felt so good about winning. I know. I you know. do the whole thing. The brr, it was so great. It was a happy accident. The yeah. brr, the brr, and then you're like, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, totally. Oh, I was just dying 100%. for it. I'm like, please get to die. <laughs> All right, oh. talk to me. Saya, you first. Okay. Um, well, I feel like that felt really good, and I feel like we've been working very hard on this piece and really wanting to tell the story the best we can and really send the message that it's trying to send. And, you know, it's just been a real blessing to have Brian as a scene partner. He's very committed, and he's been working very hard. So it's been really cool. That's awesome. And I can tell you that, you know, we've had the privilege of working together a few times and this was good today, but you earned it. And it wasn't, it wasn't good because it was good. It was good because, I mean, you were just good and not, not trying to be something or whatever. You were just like getting into it. You understood your whys. You were very connected to her. Um, it was easy to direct you today. And, and, and it, was, it was fun because we got to share some light bulb moments. You know, like I was like, oh yeah, there's this, there's, something's funny here, I want to try this. And then you were able to play. So um, yeah, I think you hit the right chord with drunk, which is very hard to do. We've, we spent a lot of time on that, and I thought that was really good. Um, the two of you have great chemistry, but you also earned the chemistry. You know? Um, it's fun when the audience reacts. It is. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, like they, they're going to react when you, when you earn it. They're going to tell you you did good afterward no matter what. Even these people. They're going to say, good job. Because it's a nice thing to say. They're not going to laugh and roar and <gasps> they're not going to do all that. Because they can't. That's happening organically, instinctually. So you gave him that little kiss on the forehead, and it was like, it was just the moment. It was just right in the moment. It was, it was fun. It was spontaneous, you know? And you understand, Brian, you just, has, you just sit there. Simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you should, be, you should be proud, both of you. Very proud. <laughs> right guy. Well, I'll start with right back at you. <laughs> Uh, working with Saya has been amazing, <laughs> like super amazing. I mean, she's, she's pushed me in ways I've never been pushed on stage. And like she threw a shoe at me. Uh, <laughs> and, like you, you just, her level of, of willingness to just go is inspiring. And so it pushed me to work harder than I've ever worked, you know? Um, it, it makes me emotional even talking about it because it was so fun, like so fun. Every rehearsal was fun, and you know we talked about you talked about God inside of the scene, and grace is is so powerful, you know. And I think I know I've been crazy guilty of this in the past and and continuously, honestly. But grace is hard, you know, and and I told Saya where I was at and what my struggles are with memorizing and getting in my head and and she was so graceful like so graceful <laughs> and so that's how I was able to be the way I was you know because I had someone pushing me but also gracious at the same time you know there's it's like a tough mix because usually you just beat yourself up and so I think we did that for each other really well we we kind of put each other's flaws out there on the table and we're like this is where we can help each other and so it was awesome. So we had this experience in the last scene that the two of you missed, and Shay mentioned her why behind doing their scene, and she's so glad she's in it now, but her why, she realized, was not great at first, and now it's totally changed. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, because you picked this one, Brian, and you, you've been dying to do this play ever since you saw it up. Yeah. And so, and, and, and we handpicked Saya because it was like, we wanted, we wanted a scene partner that was going to be great. And then I told you, you better rise up. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I told him, get a head start before we tell her. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, bro, you got two weeks. 
memorize better, <laughs> and then tell her. So why did you pick the scene? Why was it so important to you? Well, it started with uh, the divorce thing. I thought that's what it was. And this kind of goes into what you said about, you know, the scenes pick you. And you can take the same scene and keep learning something from it. So first it was the divorce. I thought I was connected to the divorce because I was divorced and that was really hard. Um, and then found out that that, <laughs> that was a piece of it, but that wasn't it. So then I was like, in mass, last master class, I was like bawling about just realizing that I was a stuffed shirt myself. That, mm. I, um, that I have more of this character in me that doesn't come out, you know. And so then it became about that. It became about being free and being me. Like using, using Paul and his flaws to, exp to get rid of mine that are that. Because you see you in him? Yes, yeah. I see that, that side, that uh, sit down and grind and, and don't pay attention to the people who matter side of him. And, and I, I, would, I would actually venture, it's, it's less the grind and it's more the absolute. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think it has to do with work. Yeah. It has to do with the fact that he can't be wrong. Right. Even when he's wrong, he can't be wrong. Yeah. And it's unattractive. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, and even when he could be just, you guys could be hooking up upstairs, but he has to be right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, and that's a cool thing. That's a really, really cool thing you got through. I mean, that's great. Mm -hmm. And then well, it goes back to the same idea of like just life and how we're bringing life to the surface. And yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you are dealing with divorce, you're dealing with a brand new marriage um, and, and fighting and all the stuff that we really do go through as people. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we need opposites to come together and be together and, uh, you know, uh, and you, you find a way if you want to. What were you going to say? Well, the, so that you actually kind of said it already, but it's the, that's where it led to pride, you know, which is the, I feel like there's, there's different battles you'll get in and out of, but that's the ongoing one, you know, that I, that I face. And so it's definitely been helping with that a lot. And so I'm just very thankful, thankful for Saya for just this, the fact that we get to do this class and we get to help people. And, you know, even the, the prideful side of me, sometimes, like, I just want to go through the scene, you know? And then I, having a partner like Saya reminds me, and, and having a coach like you reminds me that it's not about the scene. And we keep teaching that, but like, when you're up here, it's easy to forget, you know? Uh, and then when you start to release that, it just feels so good to just feel the growth, the true growth all the way around yeah. in the moment. So, yeah, just very thankful. And this is a little side note, but I want to thank, um, thank Joey as well um, because of with, with his scene and the way that, that he was working uh, before on his last scene and getting up at like five and, and just like doing a bunch, it, it really inspired me to realize like there aren't excuses. Like, so stop making them. You yeah. Know? Like, just stop. Stop making them. And so we meet on Sunday, we meet on Saturday, we meet on Friday, typically. Like, we try and meet on the weekend because that's what, that's what works. And if we can do during the week, we do. And we schedule it to be over the phone or do whatever, but like, we make it happen. And so I just wanted to thank Joey for, you, d you know, when you do something like that, you're not doing it to do that, but it was inspiring to me and, and made me want to do it for Saya and, and for myself, so. That's awesome, dude. And it's, and it's a great point because you can't, you can't not af affect the people around you. And as soon as you come to grips with that, it's a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it's your fault. It's not, it's not my fault, your actions. Mm -hmm. but, but I can hold myself accountable for the fact that the people around me are gonna be shaped by what I do and, what I, and how I think and how I speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, yeah. And that's cool. That's cool. Your brother inspired you in that way and, and, and helped lift you up. And then you realize, hopefully I can do the same thing in return, which I know you have, but, but that's, that's the goal. It's like, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because it's right. But I'm also doing it because like, I want to be a good example mm. for the people around me. Because the people around me are going to, we're all going to be, you know, raising each other up and lifting each other, you know, and pulling each other down. So ideally, we keep pushing up so that the whole group comes up and the whole studio comes up and the whole, you know, all the students keep rising up together. That's the goal. Mm -hmm.
One last question for you, Sai. Yes. Was it a little surreal to hear Monica's critique when she was... Um, yes. I was like, whoa, that's the exact same thing you said to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've come, you've come so far since then, yeah. you know, and we talked about, I talked with you in that one lesson about, um, you know, you being mature and all that. You know, you went through that. Yeah. And it, it, age doesn't matter. It doesn't. You, 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 take a, you take a kid like Dakota Fanning. Yeah. She, she just grew up. Like, she, she, whatever it was, something clicked for her early. And she just kind of knew how to be an adult yeah. on stage and listen at an adult level. And, and I don't know where she's at now, so I'm, I don't even know if I'm saying something about somebody that I shouldn't. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, you know, when she was a young actress, though, she really, really was mature well beyond her years so she could listen and react and be, you know. And so, so it's okay, and I don't want you to ever apologize for being older, you know, and, having, having, and then being smart, you know. And, and then and why, though? Because you got the same lesson. You just you just earned getting it sooner because you were in the room. You were you were beaten on your craft, and you and you decided not to quit. Mm -hmm. How many of your classmates you can look around are still around? Actually, none but Brian and Joey. So and Shay, <laughs> don't forget about Shay. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And th and there's a small group of you now. Yeah. And I. I promise you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Proudy. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we will take uh, Joey. Are you on the live by any chance? Yeah. Or you are? Do we have any questions? Do we have a one question? What about here? Anybody have one question from the the live studio audience? Yes. Just to make sure, like, we keep going and we're progressing. Do you take all the notes? Yes. But I feel like you learn the most when we're in rehearsal with it. But how can we bring that in home? And if you couldn't even be with us, be, like, with your partner at all times, how can you bring that to, like, when you're practicing at home to bring it to you? You, you? you realize, you come to terms with the fact that you weren't working on the right stuff always and you dig in on new stuff, better stuff, better ways to look at the character, better ways to understand the piece, better ways to understand your point of view, and then you bring that into the rehearsal process. And ideally, yes, you're going to meet with your scene partner and you're going to do that stuff together as a team. And so there, there's always going to be the excuse, and, and it just got Dakota emotional earlier in the class, there's going to be the excuse of, well, my scene partner can't meet, this and that, so I'll just work on my own thing. But but understand the best actors, the greatest actors, they grind on their self, they grind on their own part, and they're, and they're not so worried about everybody else. All right, is that going to be it, Joe? Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for being here, everybody. We'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> No, I was going to say thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> We're done here. <laughs>